Finding up the book to read, I gotta get them all looking overseas And you know it, and you know it yeah. Round another, round another, uh. round another, round another, uh. yeah Rounding up the book to read, I gotta get them all looking overseas And you know it, and you know it, yeah Reading through the law to see, I gotta dot the I's, even cross the T's And you know it, and you know it Praying to the Lord, have mercy Show me where you wanna go first, you know While I'm teaching to the people that's thirsty, thirsty, searching for the truth that's hidden, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Speak through the mouth from my lips when I show me where you wanna go next, you know. Right away. If you lost and you don't know where the truth fed, truth fed, looking all around, but you don't know where to go. But we gon' show you the way, okay, let me read the line Line it up, send it back to back, kicking nine time Dodging killer, hate the stepping back Captain Joel from the book, get the robbers back Officer Haheem, get his pepper black Officer LaCroix, get from way back Minister of Knowledge, Officer, just remember that We gon' search the whole world, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rounding up the book to read, I gotta get them all looking overseas And you know it, and you know it yeah. Round another, round another, uh. round another, round another, uh. yeah Rounding up the book to read, I gotta get them all looking overseas And you know it, and you know it, yeah Reading through the law to see, I gotta dot the I's, even cross the T's And you know it, and you know it Praying to the Lord, have mercy Show me where you wanna go first, you know While I'm teaching to the people that's thirsty, thirsty, searching for the truth that's hidden, you know. Speak through the mouth from my lips when I show me where you wanna go next, you know. Right away. If you lost and you don't know where the truth fed, truth fed, looking all around, but you don't know where to go. But we gon' show you the way, okay, let me read the line Line it up, send it back to back, kicking nine time Dodging killer, hate the stepping back Captain Joel from the book, get the robbers back Officer Haheem, get his pepper black Officer LaCroix, get from way back Minister of Knowledge, officer, just remember that We gon' search the whole world, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Up the book to read, I gotta get them all looking overseas, and you know it, and you know it. Yeah. Round another, round another, uh. round another, round another, uh. yeah. Rounding up the book to read, I gotta get them all looking overseas, and you know it, and you know it. 
and do the law to see I gotta dot the I's even cross the T's And you know it And you know it Praying to the Lord have mercy Show me who you wanna go first You know While I'm teaching to the people that's thirsty, searching for the truth that's hidden, you know. Speak through the mouth of my lips when I'm. Show me where you wanna go next, you know. Right away. If you're lost and you don't know where the truth is, looking all around, but you don't know where to go. Searching for the road to the way back.
Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, we're back. We're back this week. This week, you're now tuned into our, our hidden, hidden history, hidden history radio radio show. Ah! <laughs> Sorry about that. Trying to um get my thoughts together for the class. Uh, we're gonna open up with uh, Syria. We're still done with Syria. The first thing I want to do is I want to deal with Wilfred. I mentioned last week about Japheth being in the Americas. I want to real quick. Um, uh, what I want? I want to go to. Type in uh, Melanesian people. Melanesian people. I mentioned Japheth being pushed over um, to the islands far e farther east. About Esau took over the European lands and assumed the identity of the real Europeans, the black ones. So real quick, give me um, Melanesians. That's good. Melanesians. Melanesians are the predominant and indigenous inhabitants of Melanesia in a wide area from Maluku Islands and New Guinea to as far east as the islands of Van Vanatu and Fiji. And Fiji. Remember I read earlier, those are Astronesians, Melanesians people. But hold on a second. That's not what I want. Let me see. Yo, keep going. Read that in the meantime. I'll find this. Most speak either one of, one of the many languages of the Austronesian language family. There you go. Of the Austronesian, what? Language family. These are all the same. These are all the same people. Go ahead. Especially ones in the oceanic branch are from one of the many unrelated families of Pap uh, Papuan languages. Mm -hmm. Other languages are the several Creoles of the region, such as Tokpisan, Hairi Motu. Solomon Islands, Pijin, uh, Bislama. Bislama, and Papuan Malay. Papuan Malay. Go ahead. A 2011 survey found that 92.1% of Melanesians are Christians. White man got over there. Damn. White man got over there fast. Damn. So Israel's definitely over there. Um, one second. Go to Origin and Genetics. Origin and Genetics. Origin and genetics. The, or, the original inhabitants of the group of islands now named Melanesia were likely the ancestors of the present-day Papuan people. Papuan people. Mm -hmm. They appear to have occupied these islands as far east as the main islands in the Solomon Islands. This is, yeah, this is Japheth. Go ahead. Including Makira and possibly the smaller islands further to the east, particularly along the north coast of New Guinea and in the islands north and east to New Guinea, the Austronesian people who had migrated into the area more than 3,000 years ago, came into contact with these pre-existing populations of Papuan-speaking peoples. All right, so the Austronesian. Jump down to... One second. Go, to, go, down, to the, go down to the picture. Watch, yeah. go down. Right there. See that? There you go. Yeah. Hey. hey yeah, that's yeah. them. That's Japheth right there. And they, you can see they, um, they have the, on Discovery Channel, sometimes they'll be having them. Yeah, they have them sh hunting the sharks. sharks. Right. And then uh, they live there in the islands. Mm -hmm. and they show you how they hunt yep. and eat. They be building stuff. Yeah, building yeah stuff. That's, I, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah build stuff. Island, yeah, yeah, yeah. All stop. Pure Negroes. Mm -hmm. I want um right. go to go down to incidents. You oh, calm down, sisters. Don't get don't don't get spirits on you, okay? Go down to um um incidents of Go down. Go down. There we go. Calm down, ladies. Calm down, sisters. I know. I know. Oh, hey, they had the hair of Jesus. <laughs> All right, so they're known to have this hair. This is them. Go down. This, this is what they're known for. Incidents of blonde hair in Melanesia. Blonde hair is rare in native populations outside of Europe and North Africa. It evolved independently in Melanesia. Where Melanesians of some islands, along with some indigenous Australians. Along with what? Some indigenous Australians. Ah, that's the Japheth. That's the ori Aboriginal Australians. The original Australians. Before those Brits got over there. British over there and claimed Australians. Yeah, and pushed them in the, pushed in the them mountains. And, 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 yo, they killed them. Right. They, were, they were killing them. Okay, the um, Australians. Go ahead. And push them in the mountains. Right, go ahead. 
are one of a few groups not descended from Europeans who have blonde hair. Correct. So you have Jake, you have, Jake, you have heathens, dark heathens, that have the blonde hair. Now, Jake is among these people. I, I can't deny that. We were taken over here and we mixed among them. So I'm pretty sure among them you have us with the same hair. Okay? But what, well, our sisters don't, walk, don't get blonde hair to mimic them. Because that's blonde woolly hair. That ain't blonde white people hair. That's blonde woolly hair there. Okay? It's still like sheep. Still right. Look like sheep. Um, right. Sheep hair, you know? Uh, go down to the pictures. Click, the, click down. Go down some. It's all Japanese here. All right? These are, Jap these are all go back to Javanese people. Um, what else did I want? Um, click the word, the origin of Melanesian. What the word means. Or just go to, go to Melanesian etymology. I mean, it's in the word, Melanesian. Yeah. Definition of it, or etymology, whatever. And click, uh, whichever one. Try, try Wikipedia. Yeah, click there, whatever one. It's going to tell you what it means. Melanesia. See that? Click the map there. See? Australia. In uh, Melanesia, Polynesia. See all the little islands? See Papua, uh, Papua New Guinea. New Guinea. Yes. Yeah, that's all them. That's all Far Eastern. These are the Pacific Islanders. Solomon Islands. Oceania, that's them. Solomon Islands, this all them pushed here. Okay? So Jaffet is still around. They just pushed all the way. In, right. the, mount in the mountains and the islands. Yeah, in the islands mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah, Esau is living in the best of the uh, part right. of the land. Devil. All right, so now uh, go back out of this. Micronesia, Macronesia. I think that means small islands or big, something like that. Melanesia. The word means Melanesia. Melanesia. Uh, let me see. It's the... Hey, go 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 back out and put in uh, the etymology. Etymology. Yeah. Of, of Melanesia, not Polynesian. Melanesia etymology. I found it before. I know what it means. I want, I want pe people to see it. I'm just touching on Japheth real quick. That's all. You got it? All right, so yep. there it is right here. Yep. Uh, the name. The name Melanesia from Greek, black, and island etym etymologically means islands of black, black people. people. Melan, melan, melanin, Melanesian. There you go. Islands of black people. In reference to the dark skin of the, the inhabitants. inhabitants. Now, Japheth is always in these areas. They just got um, just areas of Europe. They pushed them over. They pushed them out. The Javid already had Greece. They had Europe. They had these islands already. They had these areas already. They just got pushed. Remember, remember the Medes, the Medes, and so forth. That's Javid. They had these areas. They had the Far East and so forth. Then eventually Moab and Ammon were forced. Were eventually pushed out by Babylon. Most of the majority of Moab and Ammon were pushed over along with Javid, and they intermingled together. That's your Taiwan, that's your Taiwan, your uh, Thailand, and all, it all mingled around. Because Moab and Ammon got pushed over when the Babylonians took over and pushed most of them out of these areas, and they ended up coming over to the far east as well and intermingled with Japheth. That's why it's, that's why all these different people, Indonesians, Javanese, it's all mingled around. Elam went over there too, Hindus, Elam went over there, they went far east. They said, oh, it's, all these lands are neighboring, they're all neighboring. So Japheth has always had these, these islands here, Pacific Islands and so forth. That's what they refer to as Javanese, because that's just Javan and them, the, the Japheth took over this area. They had that, had that land already. But they didn't later on, Moab and Ammon got pushed over there too. All right? So that's what I want. Islands of, so the Greeks called them black people, island blacks, or black islanders. Okay? Hey, Deke, uh, quick question. Uh, this is what Genesis 10 and 5 said. 
about the isles of the Gentiles. Yeah, read that. Let's get it. Read that. Yeah, it says uh, Genesis chapter 10, verse 5. Mm -hmm. It said, By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. And then when you go to the definition of isles, it says, An island or a peninsula, especially a small one. Mm hmm. Right. Because it says here in verse 2, the sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, Magi, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, Teres, Gomer, and it says, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, uh, Elisha Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these, going into Japheth as well, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families and their nations. So it is referring to Japheth here, inhabiting isles. But it also goes into all Israel, all Israel, all the nations inhabiting their lands in general. But most but you got a lot. Of, you got a lot of so-called scholars that say only Japheth is Gentiles. Right. I've heard that before somewhere. I've heard about Japheth. Heard. That's in front of just Japheth being Gentiles inhabiting the, the isles as in islands. And Japheth took those islands. Okay. But Israel, other nations, uh, what's the name? Other nations took islands as well. All right, but Japheth took those islands. They took the Fiji Islands. They took those isles. They took even to, they had Crete. Crete's an island. They took that too. Yes, sir. Crete is an island. That's where, what's the name of studying at? Um, the Minoans. They had Crete. That's right. Japheth. Yep. So Japheth took the isles. They took the isles. Not all of them, but they took the islands areas. The Islandic, that's why the Greeks called them what? Melanesians. Black Islanders. Okay, that's Japheth going into that. But it, it, when it says Isles, it says the Isles, it is referring to Japheth right there, but of course it's going into where Ham and, and, um, Ham, and Ham also took portions of Japheth's land that they shared as well. Like the, Sido the Sidonians took some of Japheth's land. We went over that right, right. months ago. All right, and then eventually Israel came. We came up in there as the uh, um, Hannibal and them. We, we took over. We ended up intermingling with both. We became the with majority. Both Japheth and Ham, and we became the majority, right? And took it over. But Japheth took the isles. All right? Someone said, how you know that that's Japheth over there? Because Japheth took the isles, the islands. That's the point I was trying to make. Right. All praises. Right, all praises. Um, that one. So that's enough of Japheth. I only touched on Japheth because, I only touched on Japheth because of the, the, uh, the Medes and how they were black. And so I want to go into how the Medes are dark. I showed you that last week. Um, and how the Medes play an, uh, an integral role. They play a major role in uh, the rise and fall of nations. Like you'll, you'll see what I mean. So let's get um, Wikipedia. I want list of Assyrian kings. I sent you that today. That should, that should be one of your latest things I sent. List of Assyrian kings. Right. Now, I go down to Middle Assyrian kings. Remember, the Assyrians and Babylonians ruled jointly as the Akkadian Empire. So I want, right, there we go. So this is the list of, what did I say, middle? Yes, sir. Middle of Assyrian kings. Middle Assyrian kings. So blow it up some, if you, if you can, and move it over. I want you to get their names. Just focus on their names. Go up. What's that say to the successor and what? Does that say successor and what on the, on the right? Uh, where, where are we looking? Successor. Succession and notes. Yeah, I don't want that. Just blow, let's move that, out. Move, move that and blow it up some more to just the two. All I want is the names, and yeah, that's fine right there. Shamshi Adad the first. Okay, so you got Shamshi Adad the first. Go ahead. Uh, Ishmi Dagan the first. Um, you had uh, Mut Askor. Um, you have Ramash. Mm -hmm. uh, Asanam. Mm -hmm. Go down. There's more. Watch this. All right, so you had Ashur Dagul. Stop. So you have Ashur de Gaulle. Why is this name Ashur de Gaulle? Because Ashur was their forefather. They took the name of their forefather. You know what's, what I find hilarious is that people say, I don't believe in the Bible because 
Um, where are their bones? Bones don't matter. I said it before a long time ago. Progeny, progeny proves the progenitor. No one knows where Abraham's body is. No one knows where he's found, but Ishmael exists. Right. No one knows where Jacob is around, but his children exist. Right. No, they say, well, there's Noah's Ark. It's not real. Okay, cool. So being that Noah never existed, right? The Ark is a myth. It's all folklore and fairy tale. Okay, no problem. Um, who is Aram? Where did he come from? Who is Elam? Where did he come from? Because those are all Semitic peoples. I'm sorry. Where's the word Semitic come from? Where does the word Semitic come from? Right. If there's no Noah, there can't be a Sem, right? Right. Who's Hem who are the Hemitic people? Who are the Hemitic peoples? Who are they? If there's no Noah, who's Ham? Right. Who are they? Who are the who are the Javanese? Who are they? Noah never existed. Okay, cool. Who are who is Aram? Where did, where did the term Aramaic come from? Or Aramean? Where'd that come from? Where did Ashur, the name Ashur come from? Right. Where did the name Assyrian come from? Because Ashur comes out of Shem. But if there's no Noah, who's Shem? So what I'm showing you is that I don't need to know. Noah existed based upon his progenitors. Based upon the progenitor, Noah's being the progenitor, his progeny, excuse me, his progeny, his children prove he existed. Now I did a class a long time ago called the Conspirators of Crappy Council. And I showed in the, in, in, in the video Noah's Ark. Yes, you it's did. sitting right there. Yes, you did. On Mount, on Mount Ararat. Ararat. It's sitting right there, encased in a rock. It's, it's petrified. Same dimensions. What, same, same, same dimensions, same measurements. They found um, <laughs> old animal dung, feces, remains in, in, the, in it. They found um, stone anchors that were let down, and you had missionaries and heathens they, they drew crosses on it. They, they knew that that was Noah. And then they have villagers that live under Mount Ararat. They have pieces of the, um, of the shards of the petrified stone, and they wrote Noah on it. So the inhabitants of Mount Ararat today, the people that inhabit that mountain, the bottom of it, because um, they say that there's a big storm. It's like a huge storm on top of the mountain, so the people are too afraid to go up there. But, the pe but, they, but those, who are wide, who, those who's, who are brave enough to go up there and check up there, they found pieces of the ship, and they take it back down to their village. Mm. And the Chinese and Russian archaeologists excavated and said, yo, this is the same exact measurements as the Bible. The same exact measurements, which is three stories. Deep. They said they were 90. I think they said they were 99.9% per sure right. that it was the Ark. And they found, they found it through a satellite. They, they, they took a picture. They said, oh, yeah, that's it right there. It's huge. It had, it had, it had to still be around because where is it going to go? It's huge. Yeah, it's gonna go. It's not gonna. It's sitting on top. Remember, when the water subsided, the boat just sat on top of the mountain. Right. The, exactly. the, water, the mountains were what submerged in water. The whole earth was un, the whole earth was underwater, including mountains. They found fish bones in mountains. How? How they get up there? Because they were swimming along the mountains and the flood, when the water came up. So these are things that I went over years ago. And they also talk about the the wood. Exact wood that the Bible Yeah, the gopher wood. Gopher wood. Yes. Yeah. That's the same kind of wood. Yep. Same what they found yeah. petrified in that stone. So if you deny the man, you deny the boat, you got to explain to me where the term Semitic comes from. Outside of the outside of Shem, Noah's son. You have to explain to me outside of outside of Shem, the biblical Shem, where does the term Semitic come from? Real quick, give me let's do let's deal with that. Give me um Shem, real quick. Mm. Etymology of Shem. No, 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 no. Uh, etymology of Semitic. The deacon, the scripture says there's no end to all the people. Oh, well, I know, oh, I know that, but I'm speaking from devil's, I'm, I'm being a devil's advocate here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, yeah. I, when I say that the Bible is not real because the people who the Bible speaks of, right. there's no, rem their, their remains are missing. You know, also, you, know, you know what they can't find also? Alexander the Great. No one knows where he's buried. Nefertiri? Nefertiri? They don't know where she's buried. Ramses the Eighth, they don't know where he's buried. Was he a real person? Hmm? Yes, sir. They can't find their remains. Were they real people? Alexander the Great. They can't find him where he was where he was buried. Did he exist? I dare you to say he didn't exist. I dare you to say he didn't. Hmm. Read that. 
Uh, Shem. No, go to Etymology, the Etymology itself. Go to the Etymology.com. Etymology.com. Go down. It should be on there. It should be in the search. Shem Etymology. Okay, you don't have it. Etymology.com. Because I, I like that website. It's more thorough. Etymology, etymology.com and just type in Shem. Semitic. Why do I keep saying Shem? Semitic. You know, it's crazy. People still do the same thing today when we bring out the, uh, that we was carried, when we bring out Deuteronomy 2868, where the yeah. slave ships. Mm hmm. Yeah, they, they, well, where the slave ships at? Exactly. Right. And there's plenty of records of the slave ships. Right. Plenty of records of the and slave ships. Remember, they weren't, they weren't built to be slave ships. They were cargo ships. They just put niggas on the ships. They became cargo slave ships when they started importing slaves over, but they were already cargo ships before they brought slaves on them, idiots. So once slavery ended, those cargo ships remained and there were no more slaves on them. Dumbasses. Dumb guys are retarded. <laughs> retarded. <laughs> Submit it. No, Semitic. Sem. Shem. Semitic. I T I C. Oh, man. Oh, God. <laughs> <sighs> I gotta walk you guys through life. They get warmed up. <laughs> All right. I, I, okay, here we go. Read that, please. Uh, Semitic, 1797. Denoting the language group that includes Hebrew, oh. Arabic, Aramaic. Oh, here we go. Arabic, uh, Aramaic. Go ahead. Assyrian. Whoa. Assyrian. Now, that's my first time looking this up here. So I don't know I was even there. Assyrian, et cetera. You know why I say et cetera? Because you have Elam. It goes on. You have Syria. You have um, I, um, Persians. Let's, go ahead. Or. Moab. Moab, Ammon. Ammon. Go ahead. Um, Joktan, Midian. Go ahead. 1826, as of or pertaining to Semites. Pertaining to who? Semites. Semites. Go ahead. Keep going. From medieval Latin. Semiticus, mm -hmm. source of Spanish, Semitical, French, Semitic, German, Sem uh, Semitish, from Semita, see Semite. Let's click Semite, please. So Semitic goes back to the word Semite. Click that, please. Go down. Let's read that now. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. look at that. A Semite. Read that, please. What year is this? Semite, 1847. So you know, you know we was that in 1847. Not reading this. Go ahead. A Jew. So the gives you the first time it gives you is a Jew. Go ahead. Arab. That's Ishmael, Ishmaelites. And also Abraham's other children who went to the east, Joktan, Midian. That's all Arab. The wild Arabs, the crazy ones, are the, the ones that blow things up. That's the wild ones. That's Ishmael, the chief of them. But there are other Arabs outside of him. Go ahead. Assyrian. Assyrians are Semite. I told that Jewish guy in the video that in Philly. Yep. I'm a semi. You're an, that's an anti semi. I said, I'm a semi too. You're the ham because you're black. I said, How? I said, You got other black nations too. You got black Arabs. He said, They're Arabized. I said, Well, you're being an idiot. But these guys, these guys they, they've stolen an identity that doesn't belong to them. And on top of that, on top of stealing an identity, they've claimed the word semi only pertains to them. Yeah, right. Bruh. That, that, that's crazy. You think you're the only Semites that, that Shem only had Jews. Shem was around thousands of years before the Jews were even in existence. We had again? Semite, 1847, a Jew, Arab, Assyrian, or Aramean. Stop. A Jew, Israelite, Arab, Ishmaelite, Assyrian, Ashur, 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 Ashur and as Aramean is Assyrian. That's a Syrian or Aramaic. Arameans are Syrians. Go ahead. And apparently, isolated use from 1797. From back, th from, from that, during that time, go ahead. Refers to the Semitic language group. Back formation from Semitic or else from French, Semite, 1845. Uh, watch this. From modern Latin, Semita. You did that earlier, go ahead. From late Latin, Sem. Sem. Shem. One of the three sons of Noah. You can't make this up. Nope. Make it make sense. So if you don't believe... In Noah ever existing, you must explain to me, outside of Shem, how are the Jews, Arabs, Assyrians, and Syrians Semitic? Outside of Shem. You, gotta, you have to explain it to me. Anyone who denies the Bible must explain to me where the term Semite comes from, or Semitic comes from, or Aramean comes from, or Aram came from, outside of Noah. Outside of his three sons. 
You must ex- you must explain that to me. Those of you who are watching, now you have an argument for a- argument for atheists. You don't believe in God, no problem. You don't believe in the Bible, no problem. Do you believe in Arabs existing? Yes. Who are they? Semitic people? Yes. Who? Are, where does the word Semitic come from? Where does the word Semitic derive from? It derives from a Semite. A Semite is a is a descendant of Shem, who is a descendant of Noah, who has written a book you don't believe in. Don't make sense. Go kill yourself. Wait, let's read on. Let's, this, this, this is better. Keep going. Let's read on. I'm, I'm seeing a little bit. I'm blind. I'm seeing a little bit of it, and I know it's crazy. What's, what's, what are y'all doing? Read the rest. Go back where you was at. What just happened? Just go hang yourself. So you All right, go back, go down. Go ahead. One of the three sons of Noah, Genesis 10, 21 to 30. We read, that last, we read that last week. Go ahead. Regarded as the ancestor of the Semites and in old Bible-based anthropology. In old Bible-based anthropology, meaning the study of people. Anthro- in old Bible anthropology. But there's no way to know what a Semite is Without the Bible. There, so it, it says an old Bible based as in as if there's other bases you can use to substantiate how they're Semites outside the Bible. There's no other way but Bible to substantiate that they're Semites. So it says uh, so it's saying in parentheses in old Bible based anthropology as if there's some other form of anthropology that's not Bible based that can explain them being Semites. There is none. The Bible explains how nations came to be. The Bible explains how nations came to exist. That's why it's called Genesis. It's the nation's beginning. Every every nation's beginning on this earth derives from three branches of one man. Shem, Japheth, and Ham. There's no nations that exist outside of that realm. None. None. Read on. There's more. Bible um, Semites from Bible-based anthropology from what? Um, from Hebrew Shem. Shem. Go ahead. In modern sense, said to have been first used by German historian August Schlosler in 1781. So, the these people knew that people that the nations derive from um, the Semitic. Anyone who says that they're a scholar. In, in historical studies of nations, anthropological studies of nations, whether if you want to be an Egyptologist, you believe in Kemet, 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 which goes back to Ham anyway. The word Kemet, we, found, we got old books that, that show you that the word Kemet comes from the word Ham, or Ham, how you pronounce it? Ham. <laughs> ham. We brought that out already. Ham, Ham is all Ham. It's still Ham. So either or. If you, you would have to, or you even have a, a term called Cushitic peoples. Cushitic. Who the hell is that? What is, who, what is, a, Kush, what is a Cushitic peoples that go back to Ethiopia? Who's Cush? Who that? Oh, that's right. Cush is the child of Ham. Wait a minute. Who's Ham? The child of Noah, Noah. man. Yep. <laughs> you can't beat it, man. It's full circle for you idiots out here that denounce the Bible. We make things hard for y'all. You can denounce the Bible all you want. History bears record. I said before, progeny proves the progenitor. I don't need bones. I don't need no mummified remains of a, of a person to say, yeah, they existed. Because their children prove their existence. That's like a person saying, that's like, for example, let's say, for example, me. Use me as an example. I lived a life where I, I, um, my, my identity was secret. No one knows my real name. No one knows where I'm from. No one knows where I lived, but I had a whole bunch of kids all over the place, right? And they all have my name, whatever. You, you, and my remains are a mystery. No one knows where I'm buried or whatever. My remains being a mystery doesn't negate my existence because my children prove my existence. So where's Abraham's body at? I don't care where Abraham's body is because Abraham dropped seed in enough, in, in, in enough women to produce children that became nations, that exists today. So I don't need to know where Abraham is buried because I know where his I know his children are running around blowing things up. I know that. I know them C4s they strapping themselves is real. Literally. Literally, so uh, they ain't real. <laughs> Syrians are real. And the Bible confirm it. And the prophecy right. 
Right. The Bible confirms he's going to be wild like yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. So I'm taking this, this, this captivity stuff really slow, history slow. Now, let's go to, um, it says um, from Latin Sem, because in, um, in, um, the Greeks spoke, the Greeks, um, the, the, the Romans oftentimes spoke um, Greek or vice versa. So it says from the Latin Sem. Get Luke real quick, Luke. And Dick, you know, most, Luke most, three. Of, most of the time, all these things they're saying, is just they just don't want to keep God's law. That's right, just say that. Just say, yeah. just say, just say, just say, listen, I like being a nigga. Yep. I want to die, and I don't believe in that Bible because I want to die. Cool. Yep. Much respect. Yep. Sign what Kevin Samuels do? <laughs> Get off my chair. <laughs> Salute to you, man. Salute to you two thirds, man. Yeah, just wait for the bombs to come. That's it. Just wait for the just wait for the bombs. It's cool. Nukes. You know? Deke, what you want? Luke 336? Yeah. Because Luke is written in Greek. Yeah? The book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 36. Which was the son of Canaan? Which was the son of our fox, our faxad. Mm -hmm. Remember, our faxad was one of Shem's children. Our faxad. Go ahead. Which was the son of Shem? Sim. Son of who? Sim. See, that's Sim there. Because in Greek, the letter S is pronounced with a sh sound, as in shut up, or or, or shoot, or or shy. So the letter. So when we read Sem in English, it's not really pronounced Sem. It's pronounced Shem. With an S, it's a, in Greek, it's the S H sound in Greek. S H. Sound. So you'll, you'll find words like uh, um, in Greek, like the name Alicia in Greek is Alicius. But it's not really Alicius, it's Alicius. 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 The S, -H, the S in Greek is the S in Greek is the SH sound. Um, another example of that would be um, Eli. Um, Elisha? Eli, uh, not Elisha. Uh, Elias. Elias is Elijah. That's, that's born. Like Jesus in Greek would be uh, Jeshu in Greek. It would be Jeshu. J-E-S, well, well, in English, English form of it, J-E-S-U. The S is added. The, the S can be added or taken away. Okay? The, the, the name Jesus is, uh, is, is an English derivation of the Greek uh, Yeshu. Yeshu. Or Jesu. J-E-S-U. Jeshu as in short for what? Yeshua or Yeshua, whatever. In English is Jesus. In the, in the, as, that's why in Spanish they say his name is they say your name is uh, Jesus, or they'll say Jesus without the S Cristo, Jesus Cristo they'll say Jesus without the S because the S in Greek and Spanish can be removed or added. You heard dumb niggas saying on on, on 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 the message board last week the name Jesus comes from Zeus. It does not. Oh gosh, oh, man. gotta you stop. Shut that, your white mouth. You gotta stop this, man. Oh. The name Zeus in Greek is Deus. D E as in Deus or Dios or Dias as in day. He was a day god. He threw lightning bolts. He resided in Mount Olympus. He was a day god. So his name was like they say Buenos Dias, that like, good day. Buenos Dios is Deus, Dios, Dias. That Zeus. The letter D in Greek is the, the letter D in Greek is the uh, yeah. The letter Z in Greek is the D sound. The letter Z in Greek is the D sound, as in Deus. So Zeus in English is pronounced Zeus. In, among the Greeks, it was Deus with a D. So it's not Jesus. <laughs> yeah, they dumb, this Negroes, man, is Jesus, brother, Jesus. Somebody smack him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's Deus. Dios. And feminine is Dias. That's why women say I'm a diva. Right. The word diva goes back to a goddess or a devo for a man. It's all the same. It's all relative. Divine, as in divinity, as in divine. It's all relative. It's all the, all the language, the words, English. Remember, the most high made languages. So all the word, every, every language derives from the original, original Hebrew, the original, original, the angels speak. The prophets spoke of old, the original, before the dividing of tongues. Everyone spoke so-called Hebrew, everyone. Real, pure Hebrew in ancient times. Adam and his wife, and all languages derive from that language. All, all of them, including English. As mixed as it is, it's, all, it's a mutt language as well, but every language derives from that one. Every language derives from that one. Yeah, and that, that's why languages now are, um, are, diff are different dialects of each other. You know, like Greek is like, you have alphabet, alpha, omega, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I'm, I'm sidebarring, but the point is, is, that, is that people come with, to their own foolish conclusions without doing any research, man. You gotta do your research. 
You want to say something, LaCroix? I'm sorry. No, no, uh, when you mentioned Dios, uh, the, uh, like in French, this uh, Dios without the S is D-I-E-U, which is Dieu, which means God. Right. In French. Right, Jew, right. Without it's, the S. Right, without the S. So you're going, going again, going back to my point about the S being interchangeable. It could be right. added or taken away right, right, yeah. and retain the same meaning. That's how they, they say God in French. Right, like Dio. 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 Or, yeah, right. Right, without Dio. The S. Right, without the S. Dio, right. so Dio. Right. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Buenos dia. People say buenos dia or buenos dias. S is taken. At S. Those of you who speak Spanish don't talk about because you speak a damn Latin. That's Latin. That's a, ca- that's a, a cave, caveman language. The Romans ran the caves and their language died. But Dick, uh, anyway, the, 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 the whole conclusion of the whole matter is keep God's law mm-hmm. and it's live. That's it. All that stuff All is it's irrelevant. It's right, it's irrelevant. It's not necessary. But I only, I only present these arguments for those of you who may find yourself um, having any doubts, those of you who are new to the Bible or understand right. the Bible. I present those facts to you so you can't say, well, I don't believe in that Bible because of those arguments I presented earlier because you're going to lose. If you come across those who know the Bible like we do, you're going to lose that argument. On the secular level, on the biblical level, argument, you'll lose. Because I, I cover both. So there's no way to escape. You, you're just at the, at, once when you and I have a conversation and you sound believe in that Bible and you give me them dumbass reasons I mentioned earlier, I'm a, you're going to get lined up and destroyed. You, you, you just, you just line yourself up. You just don't believe. Right just say I don't believe. Let's just say to me, among us, I don't believe. That's it. Just end it with, just be, just be clear. That's the wise choice. That's right. There's a wise choice. Right. You can say, I don't believe. Cool. I don't believe. <laughs> now, give me, um, go back to the list of kings again. Thank you. Sidebar for a lot. It's all right. Right, we back was, in uh, <laughs> we back in Luke three, right? D? Yeah, Luke three. We read it again. Uh, Luke, the book of Luke, chapter three, verse thirty six, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxad, which was the son of Sem, which was the son of Noah, which was the son of Lamech, uh, Lame- mm-hmm. which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of uh, Mahal- 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 Malalil. Mm-hmm. Which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son, son of God. God. So you, you have so you have to acknowledge these people. If Noah existed, that would mean by all if Noah existed, you cannot denounce his ancestors. Now you gotta go back to Seth, you gotta go back to Adam again. Going back to that Bible again. Continue where we at. Asher. So Asher, give me Genesis 10. To see why their names is Asher all over the place. Asher, Dugo. Uh, Deke, if I make a point. Yeah. Uh, remember, uh, we showed a couple of shows back. We showed uh, um, it was some scientific uh, mm-hmm. that Esau did on Adam and Eve. Saying there's, a, there's a science. They call them scientific Adam and Eve. Right. They call them scientific Adam and every, every single person on earth, their genes all tied back to that one man and one woman back in Africa, Adam and Eve. They call them scientific Adam and Eve. They, they, they say scientific, they're not going to say biblical Adam and Eve. Right, right, right. They say scientific Adam and Eve. Because he's adverse. Right, because <laughs> he's adverse. He's, he's Satan, the Bible speaks of. Read that. Genesis 10. Genesis chapter 10, verse 1. No, um, Ashur, 1020, 22. Uh, Shem? Uh, yes, sir. The children, the book of Genesis, chapter 10, verse 22. The children of Shem, Elam, and Ashur, and Arfak, Arfaxad, and Lud, and Aram. So, children of Ashem, or Semites, Elam, Ashur. Ashur is the, is the father of the Assyrians. Father of the Assyrians, or Assyrians. And Arfaxad, which is Abraham's um, great-grandfather, Lud and Aram, going back to the Arameans. These are all Semites. So they, what these nations did was, uh, um, these nations, outside of Abraham, of course, they deified the fathers. They deified Ham, they deified Ashur, and worshipped him as a god. So read that, Ashur what? And named themselves after him. Read that. Ashur de Gaulle. Uh-huh. Ashur Apollon 80. Uh, Nasir, Nasir Sin, mm-hmm. Sin Namir, um, Ibki Ishtar, Ishtar. Ibki Ishtar, because they worship these gods. Ibki Ishtar, going back to who? Ishtar, Esther. Go ahead, Asherah, go ahead. Adad Salulu. Uh-huh, Adasi. Adasi. Go down. 
Go down. Go. Don't go too fast now. We just passed those last two. You just, you just passed those up there? I never read those. Go up, go up, go up. Go up. Let me read these. Go up here. Go Hold up. On. Keep going. Right here. Yeah, we didn't read these. Blow it, move it up, blow it up. But I, I don't want those two. Just keep the years and the names. Well, whatever. Yeah, that's right there. That's good. Go ahead. Uh, Shemshi Adad the first. Right. These names are important. Shamshi Adad the first. Ishmi Dagon first. So they worship the god Dagon. The, the Dagon. Give me that real quick, real quick. Dagon. No, we read these already. Go to the other ones that you just had. The Bel Bana. Okay, go down. Okay, we did read those in. Come on. Right here, bro. Right here. So hold on to that. We read earlier. We read earlier about Dagon. We read Ishtar. We read Dagon. Get on um, real quick. Dagon. The Assyrians worshipped. The Assyrians worshipped him. Dagon. He's a, he's a fish. He's a fish god. Yeah, the god, yeah, right. The Philistines. Uh, Samson, right? Yeah. Uh, Dagon. With the Philistine. Hold on. Judges. Uh, First Samuel five and two. It was scripture. The Most High. He knocked it. He knocked it down. The, yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. First Samuel five and uh and and one. Oh yeah, when they put the al- al- the cover in. Right, yep. right, right. They kept falling over. <laughs> like, what the hell going on here? <laughs> First Samuel. The book of First Samuel, chapter five, verse one. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it unto the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face mm-hmm. to the earth before the ark of the Lord. They, 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 put, they put the ark of the Lord in the freaking temple of Dagon. Go ahead. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. <laughs> the Lord cut the hands off of the idol. Go ahead. <laughs> Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Uh huh. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon and Ashdod unto this day. Damn, read on. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them of Ashdod. And he destroyed them and smote them with emeralds. Emeralds is hemorrhoids. God gave them emeralds. Emeralds is hemorrhoids. He put boils in their behinds. Yes, yes, all praise to the Lord. He gave, he gave them hemorrhoids, all praise. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord can smite you with hemorrhoids. Go ahead. Um, even Ashdod and the coast thereof. And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of the God of Israel shall not abide with us. For his hand is sore upon us, and upon Dagon our God. And upon Dagon our God. These are Ashdodites. These are Hamites. Go ahead. Verse 8. They sent, therefore, and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them, and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto Gath. And they carried the ark of the God of Israel about thither. And it was so, that after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. <laughs> He smoked the men of the city. He both, didn't want it there. Go ahead. And he smoked the men of the city, both small and great. And they had emeralds in their secret parts. He put boils in their secret parts. He put boils all in their genitals. And they're behind. Messed them up. That's all I want. Now give me um, First Chronicles 10. I, I just sent him a picture with the fish Dagon. Yeah, I was going to go into that. Yeah, the fish Dagon. Also, uh, put the Pope. Yes, Dagon. yes, yes. Right, I'm, I'm going to yep. show you. Hey, and get that little Christianity fish they be yeah, using that's, on the back that's, 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 that's it, that's, that's a Catholic right. thing. That goes all, all so, that yeah. coincide, right? Yeah. Isn't that Darwin's theory, the fish? I don't know what, I don't know what Onias is talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that was Darwin's theory. Nah, bro. Yeah, nah, that's a little it's, fish. It's a big thing, too, bro. Something went off on that side over there. I've done any thoughts on what Onias just said? Just mute my mic. Just mute my mic. Can you put those? There you go, right there. All right. This is your Christianity right there. Right. The mother yep. of uh, Christianity. Blow it up. You blow it up some more? That's it right there. And you can see that? 
That's all you can do? I be getting lazy over there, man. If I some, it's some blow it up, man. <laughs> That's it, D. That's the best we can do. That's it, D. I'm sorry. Nothing else. There's no high def. That's it. We're just going to stop right there. Let's go analog. That's it. Yeah, right, right there. We're going to stop right there. That's so we can swap as we can go. Hey, man. Come on, man. Yo, come on, brothers. Yep. There you go, right there. All right. There you go. They probably look. can't put it side by side and blow it up, but you have to do it one at a time. All right. So let's go to go to yeah. Side side? You can go. You can do side by side. Why can't I do side by side? Yo, I believe in y'all, man. He saw the devil, man. So there were instances where Ash Dodd was depicted as a man. You read that. We read that earlier, where his body was, his hands were removed. But he's also, he's a fish god. That goes back to, you know what that goes back to? You know who it goes back to. That goes back to your Aquaman in DC Comics. That's who he is. He's just Dagon. That's the same. Fish god, right? Fish god. Yeah, he's, um, what is his name? With the trident. Um, Poseidon. Poseidon. That's him. That's him. The DC gods are reborn. That's Greek gods. Satan, Superman is Baal. Wonder Woman is Astereth. Um... Uh, rope, some rope, cyborg is Hermes. Uh, cyborg is uh, Hephaestus. I know Flash is Hermes. He's a speed god, the god of speed. That's why those those two wings here. Yeah, good brothers. All right, so you see you see the, you see the, um, the the heathen right there with the fish hat on, open up on top, and you see the pope right there with the hat again, open up on top. It's gonna be a fish. Now give me the one. Give me, give me the other one. The Christian um, fish symbol. Let that go. Drop all of that. Get the Christian fish, fish symbol. Yeah, I know what we're talking about, right? It looks like this. It's like, it's like this. It's like a little, like a little. That yeah, brother know what we talking about. Y'all was in Christianity with that fish symbol. Does that little car. fish thing, brother? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. See, it says Jesus there, yep. and it has the the, the fish there. He's a, he's a fisherman. That's BS. That goes back. That goes back to Dagon too. Dagon, yep. That symbol is Dagon as well. And, and that goes to the uh, the class that Bishop had yesterday when he goes to Ecclesiastes. There's no new thing on mm -hmm. the sun. Mm -hmm. So it's the same uh, uh, spirits, uh, uh, evil spirit, the same um, idolatry. Uh, right. Idol, it passed idol, on. It passed on from Be generation to generation. Because remember, and we're talking just change. Right. We're talking about we're talking about Assyria. They worship Dagon. They named themselves Dagon. Then the, you reading earlier, the Ashdodites. They, they came after. Ashdodites worshipping Dagon. Dagon. Deke. Yeah. If I may. Over in West Africa, we worship, we worship, a, a, worship a god named Da. So this might be go back to him also because we around the Hamites over there. Mm -hmm. And they had that same god uh, named Da. His name it was D-A. But I'm pretty sure that's the same god that, that's here in the scriptures. Mm. Dagon. Right, go back. Let's just say die for sure. Maybe. Right. Maybe, yeah. Go back. Um, give me uh, First Chronicles ten. Book of First Chronicles, chapter ten. What verse do you? Um, eight, eight to ten. The Book of First Chronicles, chapter eight. First, I'm sorry, First Chronicles chapter 10, verse 8. And it came to pass on the morrow when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his sons fallen in Mount Gabor. And when they had stripped him, they took his head and his armor. And Saul's head and armor, go ahead. And sent into the land of the Philistines round about. Into the Philistines, watch this. And carried tidings unto their idols and to the people. And they put his armor in the house of their gods. And fasten his head in the temple of Dagon. So they put, so they put Saul's head in the temple of Dagon. The Philistines. So they all worship that same God. The Assyrians worshipped him. The Babylonians, the Philistines, Ashdodites, same people. They, they ended up, they put, they put Saul's head into the temple of Ashdod. They fastened it. Okay? Or nailed it into the temple of Dagon. That's all I want. So let's go back to where we're at. Next name's here. These names are important for a reason. You probably want to go with these names. You'll find. You'll see why. Go ahead. 
All right, so uh, we have Bell Benai. Um, Bell, it goes back to Bell, Bell as in Be Bell and the Dragon. Bell, um, Bell, Ball, as in the bitch brought that out yesterday. Ball, Bell, same thing. Go ahead. Labaya. Um, we have Sharma Adad the first. Uh -huh. We have Iptar Sin. We have Bazaya. Uh, Lalaya. Shu na, na, uh, Shu na, Nanua. Uh, Sh Shamar Adad the second. second. We have Risham the third. Um, Shamshi Adad the second. Ishmi Dagon the, the second. I believe Shamshi is son. That's where Samson comes from. Shamshi, right? And Shamshi Adad the third. Uh huh. Ashur Narari the first. There you go again. Ashur. Ashur Narari the first. Go ahead. Puzar Ashur the third. Another Ashur again. Go ahead. Um, Enil Nasir the first. Uh, Nor Ili. Ashur Shadani. Ashur again. Shadani. Ashur Rabbi the first. These guys honor their forefather. Ashur. He existed. Ashur. Go ahead. Ashur Nadine Ahai the first. Enel Nasir the second. Ashur Narari the second. Ashur Bell Nashishu. Wow, Ashur Bell. Damn, go ahead. Ashur Rem Nashishu. Uh huh. Ashur Nadine Ahia the second. Ashur again. Uh, Araba Adad the first. Go down. We're going to a middle Assyrian now. So Ashur, Ashur. You see Ashur over and over again. Ashur, 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 Ashur. These all goes back to Shem's child, Ashur. In Genesis 10, 21 and 22. Go ahead. Ashur Yabalit. I'm telling you, Ashur again. The first. Uh, uh, Inili Naruri. Arik Ding Ili. Uh -huh. we, you know you can't pronounce his name properly. Go ahead. <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing our best. Go ahead. <laughs> Adad Narari the first. Shamanazar the first. There we go. That name right there. Shamanasser the first. So that name is very important historically. Shamanasser the first. That's why I'm going to these slow. Shamanasser the first. Go ahead. Um, Tukiti, to 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 the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took 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 the first. I'm took. really I'm really trying to pronounce them too. Uh, Ashur Nadine Apli. Okay. Ashur, Ashur again. Ashur again. Ashur Narari the third. Uh huh. Enil Kadari Yasur. Uh huh. Um, uh, Ninurah Apal Iko. Uh huh. Ashur Don the first. Ashur Don. Hold on. Ashur Don the first. Ashur Don the first. Mm. Biblical is Asuradon. This is Asuradon the first, who he, whom he's named after. Shalmanazar the first, whom Shalmanazar later on, biblically, is named after. These are their great, 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 great grandfathers. Go ahead. Ninurtu Takati Ashur. Sure again. Uh, is, isn't that uh, Nim? I, I think you had that in the class, the first. Uh, first uh, king? Yeah. No? Who? Ashurdan? No. Ashurdan? No, that's Sargon. Oh, Sargon. Sargon okay. means king. Sargon the first is king. Sargon means king is a title. It's okay. a title. Sargon of Akkad. Sargon of Akkad is Nimrod. Sargon of Akkad, not Ashurdan. Ashurdan is Ashurdan. Go ahead. Uh, Mataku Nishku. Ashur Resh. Ashur again, go ahead. Ashur Resh Ishi the first. Ashur Resh Ishi the first, go ahead. Tiglath Pileser the first. Oh, Tiglath Pileser the first. Tiglath Pileser. So you got uh, Asardan, 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 Shamanasa, Tiglath Pileser the first. Keep these names in mind. They're very important later on. Go ahead. Asharit Apa Ekor, Ashur Belkala, um, uh, Arabah Adad the second, Shamshi Adad the fourth, um, Ashur. Okay, Ashur Nasir uh, Pa the first, mm -hmm. Shemanasar Nasper, an Ashur and Apple, Ashur a Naspel, Ashurn Ashurn Sapal the first. Okay, keep that one. Ashurna Sapal. Ashurna yeah. Sapal the first. Okay, keep going. Watch this. Shamanasar the second. Here we go. Shamanasar the second. The second. Go ahead. Ashur Narari the fourth. Ashur Rabi the second. Ashurish Ishi the second. All Ashuras. Watch this. Tigla Pelesa the second. Tigla Pelezer the second. Ashur Don the second. second. Ashur Don the second. Go ahead. Now we have a Neo Assyrian king. These are the kings you guys are familiar with. You have the Neo-Assyrian kings. Hold on. Let's read those. Um, Adad Narari II. 
Adad Narari the second. Um, Tukuti Nanarter the second. Watch this. Um, Ashurna Ashurna Sapal the second. Ashurnaris Sapal the second. Keep that name in mind also. Shamanassar the, the third. Shamanassar the third. Go ahead. Adad Ad, Adad Narari the third. No, you mean Shamshi. Shamshi Adad the oh, I'm fifth. I'm sorry. Shamshi Adad the fifth. Uh huh. Now you have Adad Narari the third. Uh huh. Shamanassar. Shamanassar the, the fourth. fourth. Ashordan the third. Sharadan the third. Go ahead. Ashur Narari the fifth. Uh huh. Tigla Pelesar the third. That's the guy you know over the Bible. Tigla Pelesar the third. Go ahead. Shamanassar the fifth. Shamanassar the fifth is the guy you guys know that overthrew Northern Kingdom. Shamanassar the fifth. Tigla Pelesar the third. These are the, these these guys here are the ones you refer to biblically. Tigla Pelesar the third. We read the first and seconds earlier. Okay. So now. So deep, they always kept the names of the ancestors within the, the name, right. Their names of their ancestors or their gods, right? Which was their forefather, which which they became a god, or their gods themselves. Which all goes back to Nimrod anyway. Go back to Bel Nimrod, or go back to him again, and his mother. Um, let's go to BibleHistory.com. BibleHistory.com, Assyria. BibleHistory.com, Assyria. Yeah, BibleHistory.com, Assyria. You got it? Yeah, I sent it to y'all, the link. I'm gonna, show you the, I'm gonna show you guys the nature of these people. That they, I told you that they were hated when they, when they ruled. They were very, very ferocious people. And I'm gonna show you why they were so ferocious. Bible history. Uh, there we go. Load it up. And we're gonna read. We're gonna um, um, read. Hold on. Yeah, we're going to read um, End That Tribute. In the beginning, and End That Tribute. Not the top blue part, just the bottom part there. Yeah, right there. Blow it up some more. So those two parts in the side are, you know, gone. All we want is the, the main paragraph. God swore to the Israelites that if they disobeyed him. Well, we're going to stop the tribute. Go ahead. God swore to the Israelites that if they disobeyed mm -hmm. him, he would punish them. And ultimately allowed them to be destroyed and carried away captive to foreign land. When their rebellion had caused God to cause God's anger to reach a climax, mm -hmm. he raised up the brutal Assyrians to punish Israel. He raised up the brutal Assyrians, brutal Assyrians. Go ahead. And to establish an empire that would be a terror to the world. To establish an empire that would be a terror to the world. They weren't just brutal to Israel. They were brutal to everybody. Go ahead. It was by the Assyrian Empire and its invincible army that the northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed. Yep, under Tiglath-Pileser, who we read about earlier, and Shalmaneser V, who was the final blow. Go ahead. The annals of the kings of Assyria, uncovered by archaeologists, have recorded the many victories of the invincible Assyrian host. The annals, their writings, their inscriptions in stone and so forth, and in their metal and so forth, document their conquests. So that you cannot deny these people existed. Go ahead. In these annals, annals are also recorded the names of ten Hebrew kings. Mm -hmm. Omri. Omri's one. Ahab. Omri's Ahab's father. Ahab himself. Jehu. Jehu's another. Menahem. Menahem. Hoshea. Pekka. Hoshea, Hoshea is the one that Shamanazah conquered. Pekka. Pekka, go ahead. Uzziah, Ahaz, Hezekiah, and Manasseh. Right, U Uzziah, Hezekiah, he tried over, that's Judah. He tried over to um, Hezekiah, but that thing didn't work. The Lord came and... Killed a lot of the men at that point. Angel came and did damage, and that was a wrap. Go ahead. There is also testimony that confirms the biblical record. There's testimony that what? That confirms the biblical record. There is testimony that confirms the biblical record. Meaning there's proof the Bible is real. That's what that means. Go ahead. 
Ancient Assyrian policy was to deport defeated nations and lead them captive to other lands. So wait, stop. As Laquas said earlier, nothing new under the sun. Read their policy again. Read it again. Ancient Assyrian policy. Stop. Ancient Assyrian policy. This is their political actions here. Ancient Assyrian policy. What now? Ancient Assyrian policy was to deport defeated nations and lead them captive to other lands. Was to defeat nations and take them out of their lands and place them in other lands. Read it again. Ancient Assyrian policy was to deport defeated nations and Just lead to them... to deport defeated nations and what? And lead them captive to other lands. And lead them captive to other lands. Go ahead. Um, this would destroy their sense of nationalism. Stop! This would do what now? This would destroy their sense of nationalism. This would destroy their sense of nationalism. What does that mean? So their policy was to assure that what? They would not rise as a nation again. Because when you're in your land, you have a sense of what? Nationalism. Nationalism. You have a sense of knowledge of self, a sense of ethnicity, a sense of, of knowledge of who you are. Dignity, pride. Dignity, pride in where you're from, who you are. That's your land. Culture, culture well, your culture, your heritage. But if you're removed from that land... You're disconnected from that land, then you lose all sense of what? National pride. Now you're just what? An Assyrian. Now you're what? An American. Now you're British. Now you're Jamaican. Now you're Haitian. Now you're Puerto Rican. Now you're Dominican. Haitian American. You're a Commonwealth of America now. You're Dominican now. African American now. You get my point. Esau knew this. You're going to get Psalms. Give me Psalm 64. Just show he knew this. That's why we show y'all. The Bible makes it clear. These nations conspire. See, <laughs> where, where the nations we're reading about now, where they, where they failed, the nation that rules today is successful because he learned from, based upon his records in archaeology, he learned where they failed, and he strengthened their weaknesses. Dang. That's why I said to y'all um, chapters ago, I said America is a, that word's not common among us, but an amalgamation, meaning a mixture right. or a compilation of every captivity we've been in since Egypt in one. America is Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, well, I'm going to show you that. Greece and Rome. She's all of them combined. All of them combined. America is a mixture of all the nations. America took from everybody and said, we're going to make a... That's why she got so strong so fast. You know, how America, you, know how young, you know how young America is? America's 245 years old, I think. Yep. Not even 300 years old yet. She's 200 plus years. That ain't nothing. That's two old people. Three, that's two old people and somebody middle-aged and some young 45-year-old. They ain't old. But she gained power so fast because she learned from the mistakes of other fallen civilizations, ancient civilizations. We're going to read it. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 64, verse 1. You want verse 1? No, no, no. I don't want verse 1. Let me, let, me get this, let me get there. See where I want to start from. Psalm 64. Oh, verse 6. Yes. Six, verse 6, six, six I'm six, sorry. Yeah. The book of Psalms, chapter 64, verse 6. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. They search out iniquities. What are the iniquities they search out? When you examine all these ancient civilizations we're reading about, Assyria, the Akkadians, they had, rich, they had rites, they had rituals, same thing, rituals, customs, they had um, celebrations, they had um, ceremonies and things of that nature. That tied back to Satan worship. Now, they, of course, they didn't call him Satan, but it's the devil nonetheless. And, and, and these nations that worshipped these gods, they were very, very bloody. Very, very sac sacrificial, sacrificial, bloody, sac um, um, sacrificial and bloody and vile. Whether it be children, people, it was completely opposite to what God required. 
And so these nations would gain power through these sacrifices to these gods. At least they believed there was power because God gave these nations power. I'm going to show you that also. But they believed based upon these idols that they worship, that the more blood that they shed of, of children, innocents, virgins, whatever it took, they, or war killing people, whatever, like they put, remember they put Saul's head in their temple. Why? To sacrifice to who? Dagon. Molech, they would sacrifice their children. Why? They believed that the, that the death of the innocent granted them what? Power. The blood of the innocent being shed granted them power. The Egyptians did the same thing. Took our babies and did what? Gave them to the, to the alligator god, Sobek. Threw them in the river. Yeah, That's what they would do. Yeah. They believed. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, like power and protection. Right, power and protection, yeah. right. And God made a fool of them with the ten plagues. So, meaning what? All these, these nations, their God, you know what their gods are? In their head. Because their gods are not real. They just make these things up and they just run with their imagination. It's crazy. But these gods are literally puppets that the nations just go, oh, look, I am Dagon. Hey, I'm actually, hey, we're going to do it. Uh, and they make things up. Like Sesame Street. In Israel, us being so stupid, we really believed that these gods were real. Now, don't get me wrong. Bishop brought it out last um last night. There is some power behind these behind these um these nations because they're dealing with witchcraft and so forth. So there is a certain level of wisdom granted to them because God d does that God, because they have no other god. Satan, the, the devil. So he does grant these nations a power to an extent because the Egyptians have power. Remember Moses turned his staff to a snake. The Egyptians turned his staff into a snake. So it's not impossible. But nonetheless. Who snake over who snake won? Aaron's staff or Moses' staff, whoever's staff, his staff ate their snakes. Something letting you know whose power was stronger. Right. Because God, because God is the God of the devil too. Right. He created them. He created them. Right. So right. there is, I'm not, I'm not negating that there's power these nations have. These nations do acquire power doing these things. Because God allow, because God allows it. Okay? Um, but the point is, is that these nations, they don't really have a God. That's why they're called devils, because it's, it's a deception. And Israel fell for that, because these gods, behind these gods came certain laws and freedoms that Israel did not have under, the, under their own God. Adultery, orgies, fornications, adult, that was no, there was no limits with that. Like Christianity, there's no limits. Read that again. Verse, uh, verse six. six. Read they, verse five. Verse five. Um... They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They no, 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 no. Be verse 2. Verse 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. The wicked. That's Edom. The wicked. Hide me from the counsel, the secret counsel. Secret counsel. Because these guys have think tanks. They sit down and think, hmm, we, we can't tell people to worship the devil. We can, I mean, that's, that's outright impossible to do. What can we do? I know. Let's give them an incentive. Let's create Santa Claus. Let's create the bunny. Let's create the pumpkin, the Halloween costumes. It looks innocent. It looks innocent. It's for the children. Oh, That's what's that up, bro? <laughs> <laughs> if you notice, every major holiday, who they use? The children. Yeah, that's the Exodus. Halloween. Yeah, that's like the, huh? Exodus, they deal wisely with us. They deal, they deal wisely. wisely. Think about it. Halloween. The children. Easter. Easter egg hunt, the children. Christmas, the children. And, and the, behind those holidays, they really mix do sacrifices. You do behind behind like those because there's big dinner, witches and, and right, warlocks. right. They do. They go. They go to um to the uh, Bohemian groves right. and so forth. And then they do and they do their sacrifice. They right. take children, most likely our children. They know they, 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 they ain't using their own, right. if at all, or some, but they 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 do that. Um. And they also convince our people to shed our own blood by killing our babies. And they use those parts for whatever they use them for. Okay? So read on. Verse uh, 2. Let me read verse 2 again. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Meaning slander, go ahead. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Israel. Suddenly do they shoot at him, 
and fear not. They don't they kill them, they, they kill them and they have no fear. Go ahead. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They commune, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. Themselves means plural. It's not just one. It's a group of nations that are wicked as hell. Wicked the front to Edom first of the Psalms 83. That's what it was alluding to. The secret council, the secret council. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. Go ahead. They commune of laying snares privily. What are the snares? Religions, holidays, politics, the, uh, corrupting, corrupting our music, the fashion. All of that is snares privily. Go ahead. They say, who shall see them? Who, who going to see us? Because they don't, they don't care about, they don't fear our God. They know our God's punishing us right now. So they say, who else sees us? Aside from their God, who else sees us doing this? They don't see it. We already blinded them. Go ahead. They search out iniquities. They, they what? They search out iniquities. They search out iniquities. Like Alistair Crawley. Alistair Crawley was known to be the most historically most evil man that ever lived, they say. Wicked Alistair Crawley, the one who established the whole um, dilemma, dilemma religion. Yep. Him and his wife, they were heavily high status um, um, children. Their parents had status. Him and his wife would travel to Egypt, and they were allowed in areas that you Negroes will never go to. And they, he would do study and research and so forth and created the lemma. Was that do what thou wilt? Do what thou wilt, for that is the whole law. Yes. And then a man by the name of Jack Parsons, the founder of, well, not founder, but the, the founder of rocket science, he enhanced his understanding of how to travel to space in that religion. It enhanced his wisdom. There's a movie, there's a show called uh, Dark Angel. I'm telling you that. I've told, told you that before. Hey, hey, D, don't that religion, do what thou wilt, don't that go back to the Epicureans? Is that, go back to Egypt. A, Egypt, all the way back. Go back. It's, all, it's a Greek, the Greeks bar Greek, from the Egyptians. Okay, right, so right. it's the same. It's relative. <clears throat> Alistair Crowley, he was homosexual too. Very. Very gay. So read on. They search out iniquities. They accomplished a diligent search. They accomplished a diligent search. We well, can't be a little gay. He's, not, he's not very gay. <laughs> he's saying my point. <laughs> just par just partially, but yeah, he wasn't fully really there. I mean, you know? I mean, he was really disgusting. He was like really just vile with it. Yeah. Um, vile regardless, just even more vile than anybody else. But it says, they accomplished <laughs> a diligent. They accomplished. They accomplished a diligent search. They accomplished a diligent search. I mean, they did successfully. They, they do ex excavations. They do archaeological digs. They, they, they do translations, they, they, um, they learn the languages, Latin the dead language. But you got Edomites that sit down and research and they study whatever fragments they find of it, they can speak it. Whatever fragments of Latin they find, they learn. That's why you have Latin written back in your dollar bill. It's a dead language. How to get back in your dollar bill? Roman numerals, all of that stuff. Okay, ancient, the hieroglyphics, all that, Rosetta Stone, all that stuff. That's all diligent search. What's the name? Champollion? Champollion, that's a diligent search. They don't, re they don't research that stuff because they, they, they want to know about Nick, learn about some African niggas in, in Egypt. That's not, no. They want to know what they were doing to get the power they acquired. Yep. Their spells, their rituals, their sorcery, we want to learn that. If they turn their staff into a stick like Moses did, we want that power right there. That's they want to know that. They can't deal with God. So they, they're, going to try to, they're going to try other alternatives. That's what the nations do. That's what the, that's what the wicked do. Edom does. Looks for alternatives. Go ahead. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them. Of what? Both the inward thought of every one of them. Their women and their children. The thought of every one of them is what? And the heart. And their mind is what? Is deep. Is deep. Because they, because they think their thoughts and their plots and plans last generations. And for every plan, they have a plan A, or they have a contingency. Oh, that fails, they got plan B. That fails, they got plan C. That fails, they got plan D. They, they think hard. When you tell a white person in the street, Christ is black, they go, hmm, if Christ is black, his people are black. If, if, if Christ is black, and he was, a son of, he's a, he was a son of God, and his father's black, and that means I'm going to be destroyed. They know that. Niggas go, it don't matter what color he is. But white folks is like, nah, that, that, that matters. They pick up quick. They know because they deep. And they know, you know what? We can't tell people to, 
cut off heads and hang them on trees like the Assyrians did. So what we'll do is we'll say, hey, rather than hang heads in a tree, hang, make ornaments that are round and hang them on the tree instead. Don't put bodies, don't put heads, of, heads under the tree. Put gifts under the tree instead. Yeah, crafty council. Don't worship the star. Just put a star on top of the tree. There you go. See, they don't put silver and gold. You got you guys don't have silver and gold, but let's make silver and gold tinsel instead and wrap it around the tree. There you go. It's for the children, for the kids. Jack o' lantern, yay! Cut a cut a face in the pumpkin, yeah. Put a candle in, it. yeah. It's not witchcraft, no, no. Just dress like a witch. Don't be one. Just dress it, like, yeah. And make it fun. And make it fun for the children. Let the kids knock on strangers' doors they don't know and ask for a strange candidate that they don't know where it came from. Yes, that makes all the sense in the world. The hell is this? Like what you, uh, like what we have today, Esau thought about this 10, 20 years ago in a, and sat in a think tank and put it all together. Right. With You know, and it's, it's out now, but they'd already had it planned out years ago. Perfect, a perfect, a perfect, um, um, example of that would be the uh, the uh, Balfour was the Balfour Declaration. Yeah. The Balfour Declaration was what 1917. Yes, sir. When did they acquire the state? 1960. 1948. 48. Sorry. That's a lot of years. That's years later. Of, of thinking, of thinking and planning, plotting. How can we do that? How can we do this? They already had it in mind. We are gonna get that land. Yep. We're gonna get it. So, no, they showed him. It's uh, another example to uh, the uh, Star Trek. Star Trek as well, right? Remember, uh, uh, Scotty always pull out a little cell phone, mm -hmm. a flip phone. Mm -hmm. We was watching that. We're like, wow! And then years later, boom! Right. And they, they got the space, uh, the space federation. Yep. What's the space force symbol? Star Trek symbol. The same symbol they used in Star Trek. Dang. Space force uses it now. People, oh, wow! It was so amazing how they're using the Star Wars symbol in space force. No, it's not. They already had their mind to go up there. Right. They already knew. That go back to Jack Parsons again. Go back to that religion. He was in, he was under that religion dilemma. Going back to worshiping Egypt and the sorcery and the spells. Mm -hmm. So I'll go back to that. So like, read, where we at? Read on. Hey, D, it's like the uh like you were saying, like the nineteen virus, it was on the back of the can of the lights off for a long time. And now all of a sudden it's coming to fruition like last year. Mm. So they had that. Way then. Right. Go ahead. Verse 7. Verse 7. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. That's the bombs. Go ahead. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. I mean, they'll be exposed. Because they, they, they said earlier back in verse uh, 5, who shall see them? But 8 says they're going to be exposed. We're exposing it now. So where we at? Let's go back to where we at, Mount. Um... Did, uh, possibly I could get a, a scripture. Yeah. Uh, Daniel 8. Yeah, the policy. Yep. Yeah, you just get that. Let me go back to what we've been earlier. Daniel 8. 825. Yeah. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 25. 24? Yes, sir. 24. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper in practice. And shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. So he said not by his own power. I Meaning the devil is going to give him mm -hmm. his power. Yep. Go ahead. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper. Through so his, that, through his what? Policy. And through his policy yeah. also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. Damn. He that's, shall. That's it. 25, right? He, uh, one, some more. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Wow. And, and also that goes to it's just a craft, the crafty council. Right. The diligent search from that he created a policy. Same thing that you're reading up there in the, uh, with the Bible history about the Syria. Yeah. So they create policies, you understand, to destroy everybody. Right. So he does the same thing. You know what the Assyrians did? They destabilized countries. Mm -hmm. When you watch the movie Black Panther, that was what Killmonger's job was to do. He was the CIA would send them in to destabilize countries, and then have and then put puppets in there. We gonna get that in the Bible too. Put in puppets to, that did their bidding to rule over the people. So read it again. Bible history now. Ancient Assyrian policy was to deport defeated nations and lead them captive to other lands. This would destroy their sense of nationalism. This would destroy their sense of nationality. 
their sense of racial pride. It will destroy it because now you're removed from your land. Right? Like that's why you see Muslims come here all wrapped up, women. Then years later, they wearing pants. They done lost their whole culture. It's just gone. Chinese come here, whatever. They wearing three piece suits. East Indians come here with the dots and so forth, and the and the and the, and the saris. Now they wearing mini skirts and jeans. They lose their whole sense of racial pride at that point. They're Americanized. Read on. And force them to be more willing to submit. And force them what? To be more willing to submit. And, and force them to be more willing to submit mean they Assyrianize them. The Greeks call it Hellenized. This is Assyrianized now. This is called assimilation right here. That's what this is. Ancient assimilation. Read on. The Assyrians were, more, were miraculous in warfare. In fact, military strategists today have, have a difficult time understanding how the Assyrians were so advanced in their military tactics. Most of the nations plundered other nations, but Assyria was the worst. Yep, most nations plundered other nations, but Assyria was the worst because they would, because they would displace nations and put them somewhere else. Put one nation from one land into another and put themselves in that land that they conquered, causing confusion. Go ahead. They were the very definition of a plunderer. They were the very definition of plunderers. Go ahead. Because the Lord had raised them up. Ah, to, what? Because what? Because the Lord had raised them up. There you go. Go ahead. To plunder his rebellious people. To plunder. That's why they rose. We think these nations rise because they're just so powerful and so special. No, because, because he raised them up because we were being rebellious. Uh, I have a page when we get a chance. Uh -huh. I have a page we get a chance Boop. to back this up. Read on. We get it. The Assyrians were also diabolically cruel. The Assyrians were diabolically cruel. Diabolically cruel. Go ahead. They skinned their victims alive. They skinned Damn. their victims alive. Get that image. I sent y'all. I sent y'all an image of that. Damn. It's called flaying. They flayed us. Flayed people. I think I sent it to y'all. I hope I sent it to y'all. It's an image I think I sent. It's probably one of these links right here. Hold on. Yes, I sent it to you. It's a Google link. It's uh, right under the picture of the Native Americans. It says uh, images, Google image result, right there, right under um, the Native American picture. Go you gotta down. go down, go down, go down, go down to the bottom. It's at the last, it's at the last few pictures. Go down, 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 go down. Past that, past that, past that. Right under there, right there, right under there. That link right there. Yep. Yep. Blow that up. That's the one right there. They skin them alive. I'm gonna give you a, an image. Now, if you remember. The Spanish Inquisition, they did the exact same thing. Yeah, that's not diligent what, the, what the bishop the bishop said, mm -hmm. judgment's like a ring. Right. What happened to us among the Assyrians and Babylonians, us being stripped naked and all of that and being tortured? Ain't nothing Native Americans happened to them on this side. Nothing new. Nothing Blow new it up. Sir. That's as big as it can go. Yeah, bring it, bring, it, bring, it in, bring it in. Bring it in some. So you see these guys here? Look at them. They got afros. Look at their hair. Look at their beards. Look at their, look at their hair. That's woolly hair. That's why it's beat. That's why it's beat it. That's why it's beat it like that. And those are Assyrians. So now go down to the bottom and see these guys are these two black guys here. What does it say? Palace, Palace of, of Sennacherib. Sennacherib. Flaying Hebrews. Flaying. Flaying Hebrews. Wow. Flaying them. Flaying Hebrews. Go ahead. After the siege and capture of the city of Lachish under King Rehoboam. It became the second most important city of the kingdom of Judah. In 701 B.C., during the revolt of King Hezekiah against Assyria, it was captured by Assyrian king Sennacherib despite determined resistance. Right, despite determined resistance. So he didn't conquer them fully. So it says here, flaying Hebrews. But go, now zoom in on the men. Hold on, hold on can, Dick. And get, look who's watching. Do you I, got the children. Is, do I look familiar when you saw yeah. when they us hung us? Yeah, they hang us. They got their watching. kids watching. They're serious. Got their kids watching. See that? And, and then we talk about we don't want to teach, uh, teach our children the history. 
Right. Oh, what happened to our people? Oh, they're too young. Zoom in on the, on, on the men being hang, laying there. Zoom in on the men. Zoom in on the men. Look at them. The afro, the beard. Look at them. They s- go, the, um, go, look up the word flaying, please. That's yeah. not a Negro word. Common Negro word. Flaying. F-A-L-O-I. To flay. Man, these nations, they Flaying made... The fish. <laughs> these nations made sure to document... Flaying's fine. Get the flaying there? Fine. That's fine. Definition. Flay. What'd that say? Blow it up. Flay. Mm, damn. Peel the skin off a corpse or carcass. Peel the skin off. Flay. Skin. One shoulder had been flayed to reveal the muscles. See? Uh. Skin. You know what it is to us? The, the um, Maccabees, the woman. Yeah, I was just thinking. They pulled his scalp back. Her and her seven sons. Nothing new. Judgment like a ring. We brought it out last night. Yes, sir. Skin to flay. So go back to the article again. Damn. Flaying our brothers. Flaying us. Yeah, well, wow, we read earlier they were diabolically cruel. Why? Did not you saw the uh, skin of uh, who was it? The Native Americans. And they made a shoe, something like that. Yeah, they would they would make the, they, would, they, would, they would skin the women, cut the, cut the women's breast off, use it as a as a as a purse, like a sack. sack. The man's balls, they use that. Woman's breasts. There was a uh, uh, um I forgot where I read it at. Um, where a, a man, a colonizer, he saw a sister. I think it was in Brazil somewhere, and she, and she of course they walked around with their breasts out. You know, he said, "I like her breasts. I want them." So the guy was like, what do you mean? He said, I want her breasts. So they cut her breasts off and put them on the platform. Oh. He, was, he, he wanted as in not wanted them as in to suck them. Right, right. Wanted them as he wanted them off. Right. To have them in his hand. To have them. Like a trophy. Like a trophy. What the hell is this? That's weird. He, no, I'm telling you. Demonic. Crazy. But it says, we go back to um that again, Bible history again. Oh, yeah, what time is it? 2.50? All right, we're going to take a break in about five minutes. Says the Assyrians was also diabolically cruel. They were uh, the Assyrians were diabolically cruel. Why? We're gonna find out why they were so cruel. We they skinned their victims alive. They flayed them. Flayed them. Go ahead. Cut off their hands. Cut off the hands. Sound, wait, whoa. <laughs> Can't run <laughs> by that. Kill the ducks. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Remember, wow. on this side of the world, when the Spaniards showed up here, what were they doing? To the Native Americans, they were flaying them, cutting their hands off. Remember in the Congo, the Belgium, King Leopold. King Leopold. Right. What was he doing to our brothers over there and sisters, cutting their hands off? And that's that diligent search. That's that diligent search. Yep. These guys are the devil the Bible speaks of. Read on. They, uh, cut off their hands. Cut feet. off their hands, feet, noses. Cut the noses off. That's in Hispanics as well because there's pictures. In a book called Bartolome de las Casas, where he shows this little depictions of them with their noses gone, their feet gone. Right. Then they would take those parts that were cut off and sell them as meat for us to eat yeah. on this side of the world. Go ahead. Uh, noses, ears, eyes. Cut the ears, the eyes out. Pulled out tongues. Pulled the tongues out. Made mounds of heads. Had b- heads. Go ahead. And many and many more atrocities to inspire terror in those who were demanded to pay tribute. And those who were demanded to pay taxes. Pay customs to them. Now, give me Isaiah 10, verse 5. Let's see. It said that the Most High raised them up for his rebellious people. That's their reason. That's their whole purpose of being. Oh, they were raised up so Where God can go? forgive them and they can repent. No, that's not what they were raised up. They were raised up to overthrow and destroy God's people for their rebellion. Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 5. Oh, Assyrian, the rod of my anger. Oh, Assyrian what? The rod of my anger. The Assyrians are the rod of God's correction. They are his belt. They are his ruler. They are his whipping stick. This switch. The nations is God's. You know, you was back in the back in the day, you were younger. Go get me a switch. I remember that. Go get me a switch. You had to go to your grandmother. Send you send you out to the wood. Send you out downstairs to the to a, a wood area and get a switch to beat you. Get beat you. That's crazy, man. 
That's messed up, man. Our parents are terrible. <laughs> but anyway, they, they, the, the nations, the Syrians are God's belt. His switch, that's who they are. Go ahead. O Syrian, the rod of my anger. The rod of my anger. Go ahead. And the staff in their hand is my indignation. And the staff in their hand is my anger. So when you read, we read earlier that the Assyrians were what? Diabolically cruel. So the reason why they have power, God said, is because of my anger toward you, Israel. That's why they rule over you. And that's why they're so mean. Watch. Read on. I will, send, I will send him against an hypocritical nation uh -huh. and against the people of my wrath. Against the people of my wrath, who I'm going to destroy. Go ahead. Will I give him a charge? Will I give the Assyrians a charge? Go ahead. To take the spoil. To, rob, to plunder them. To plunder us. Rob us. Go ahead. And to take the prey. And to tread them down like the mire of the streets. To tread us down like dog, like mud in the street. Watch this. How be it? He mean if not so. Stop, wait, stop, stop. <laughs> oh, wow. Read verse 7 again. How be it, he mean if not so, neither doth his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. Read verse 7 again. How be it, he mean if not so. Stop. What does that mean? That means the Assyrians don't know what they're doing. They don't know why they're so cruel. It says, God says, they don't know why they're doing what they do. They just do what I say. They're cool like that because I made them that way. And they can't help it. God is saying right here, they can't help it. So when the so-called white man comes around and kills us and murders us, guess what? Guess who put it in him to do it? Damn. God did it. God makes them that way. He mean if not so. You know Esau can't help it. Well, uh, Esau right. make all kinds of excuses. Well, I, th I fear for my life. They, yeah. they can't help it. He mean if not so. Hey, Dick, remember one time there was um, this, bro this young man, he was ment mentally retarded. Yeah. And um, the cop, somebody was up and the cop shoot him. Yeah. And they asked him, oh, oh, he was laying on the floor. He said, why you shoot him? He said, I don't know why I shoot him. Mm -hmm. He just shot him. Yeah. yeah. That's what, that's what um, Roman says, who can resist uh, my will? No right. That's why exactly. With That's Pharaoh. It. With Pharaoh, remember he hardened his heart. Yes. Pharaoh couldn't, right. Pharaoh, you know, Pharaoh couldn't like, say no. Yeah, yeah. Pharaoh said, Moses, let us go. Pharaoh said, leave. Yeah. Right. Then he come back, no. stay. <laughs> what? Yeah, stay, yeah. You talk a few. No. Dude. Yeah. Uh -huh. No. Yes. Right. Stay, yeah, stay. Because right. God said he, he mean it not, he has to. Read it again. Verse 7. That's heavy. How be it? He meaneth not so. Neither doth his heart think so. But it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. Ain't that what Esau does? How be it? How, but Esau, that's, that's his purpose. He's naturally born that way. When Esau does it. He means it. <laughs> but other nations, the Lord said, I raised him up for this purpose, to be this way, to be diabolically cruel. Hey, D, isn't the most high? He going to put that same spirit on us, too. Right, he right. He said, y'all going to do according to my anger. Right. Because we don't know my what spirit. that means. Yeah. You know what that means. <laughs> we don't know what that means. No, well, I'm going to give you an example that Israel, we did things too. Oh, right, right. right. We, we did yeah, some yeah, things right, too. Yeah, right, right. Shout out to Abaddon for finding this one. Let's get, it, let's get yeah. the Samuel one first. Okay. Yeah, I remember, the one remember the one that you brought out where we. Uh, no, no, no. Like, nah. <laughs> we, we did it too. You, I know y'all th think the Bible is just a book of, of us righteous men that ran around. We're holy and pure. We don't be open. We say darn and shoot. No. Oh, gosh darn it. Ah, oh, let's go to war. Ah, oh, shoot, shoot. <laughs> you out there fighting, getting cut and stabbed. You shit. You ain't, you're not, you're not listen. <laughs> you're not, listen, man. Y'all got to cut this out. My forefathers is proud. They were a problem. You know, I want the Samuel one first. Yes, then sir. I want the, you know, there's a reason why I want the Samuel one first. Yes, you going to read it, man? Yes, read sir. it with power, man. Yes, he, bought, he, he, he bought this out. You better, you, you better bring so it I'll, out. I'll, I'll let him read it. This is 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 30. And he took their king's crown from off his head. Go above that. Verse 29. And David gathered all the people together uh -huh. and went to Rabath and fought against it and took it. Rabath. I think that's Moab, right? Rabath, yeah, Moab. Yeah, it's Moab. Yes, sir. All right, it's Moab. Watch this. And he took their king's crown from off his head. He took Moab's crown from off his head. Go ahead. 
The weight whereof was a talent of gold. It was heavy. With the precious stones. With stones in it. Damn. Go ahead. And it was set upon David's head. Mm -hmm, Because now that's just my land now. Go ahead. And he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance. Because the Moabites here, they um, they sent our brothers back with their beards shaved and their butts out. Remember? Right. Right. They cut, they, they, Haran, they, Haran. So they, yeah. so they, they couldn't return until their beards grew back. Right. So David said, oh, you want to cut people's beards off and cut their clothes, huh? Well, that's what y'all want to do. Okay, I got something for y'all. This is what David did. Watch this. This is, this, is, this is David's retaliation. This is David retaliating. Go ahead. Verse 31. And he brought forth, and he brought forth the people that were therein and put them under saws. He put, so, he hung, so he took those that were in this area. He put them under saws. So people will think, oh, he, he, made, he made them workers. He put them under what? Under saws. Uh, you know what a saw is? A saw is a, you cut the tree down, that's a saw. Watch this. And under harrows of iron. Put them under harrows that's sharp iron, sharp like knives. Go ahead. And under axes of iron. And he put them under axes. Go ahead. And made them pass through the Brooklyn. Made them pass through the oven. He put them in an oven. David put these people in a furnace. That's what David did. Go ahead. And thus he did unto the cities of the children of whoa, 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 Ammon. Whoa, whoa. Of Japanese wait, 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 Ammon. Wait, 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 wait. Read that again. You miss a part. And thus did he unto all, all the... All, yeah, there you go. You missed that part right there. Yeah, that part. All. Read it oh. again. <laughs> and thus did he unto all the cities of the children of Ammon. Damn, that means, that means the men, women, and children. Not one city. All, all the cities. Go ahead. So David and the people returned <laughs> unto Jerusalem. And they went home. Wait a minute. Now. Isn't that David a man after my own heart? Yep. How come he didn't forgive them? Right. The now, right <laughs> now, now, remember, what they did was cut their beards off and cut their, their right, pants. Right, He said, oh, you want, oh, you want to cut beards? <laughs> right. Oh, okay. So right here, we, we read earlier, it says that he put them under um, bricks and, and right. saws. Oh, he put them to work. Is that what that means? We the one in Chronicles now. Chronicles is going to explain it more. Going to elaborate on what it means by put them under saws and and, and sharp knives and axes. Remember, in that one it says brickling. That means a furnace, a yeah, stove. Uh, yeah, I just looked that up. Uh, that's what it means. It's an oven. Right. Go ahead. First Chronicles chapter twenty and verse two. Watch this. And David took the crown of their king from off his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold, and there were precious stones in it. Uh huh. And it was set upon David's head. I just read this. Watch this. And he brought out. And he brought also exceeding much spoil out of the city. He took, they, he took, the, took the, their wealth. Go ahead. Spoil the city. Go ahead. Verse 3. And he brought out the people that were in. Uh-huh. Ammon. Go ahead. Not and, Moab. Ammon. Go ahead. And cut them with saws. <laughs> Stop. Oh, now that's better. <laughs> and he cut them with saws. So you want to cut my brother's beard in half? I'm going to cut you in half. Damn. Put them what? And cut them with saws. And he cut them with saws. Go ahead. And with harrows of iron. He cut them with knives. And with axes. He cut them. He hacked them with axes. Damn. Even so dealt David with all the cities of the children of Ammon. But what's left out is the Bricklin. He put them in ovens too. Yo. So everyone had a special time for David. With David. A special moment. Some got cut with knives. Some got cut with axes. Some got thrown in an oven, and some got sawn in half. Mm. So these nations, this is the reason why these nations conspire to make certain we stay asleep. Because they know when we wake up, oh my God. Payback. It's going to be a problem, man. Revelation. Yeah, it's Revelation. going to be a Revelation, is it that? Revelation 11, we tortured. Get that. We're going to get that now. <laughs> And guess what? That's they, why they inspire. And guess what? They know that history. They know it, yeah. Remember, um, we read earlier in, in Inquisition, when they had the Moors in chains over there in Spain? The picture right, that we right, showed, right, yeah. where they had those memorials, they had the, 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 this is the four Moors, right? Right. Right. The four Moors, they had us of uh, the statues, the sculpture. Of, of actual slaves. Of actual slaves around in chains. To remind them of what can never, ever happen again. Read that. Book of Revelation. The Bull Run. Another example. The Matador. Matamores. The Moor Killer. The Bull Killer. That's their job. Matador is the, the killer of bulls. The bull, the bull is us. We're the black bulls. Or the bulls in the net, like the Bible says, Isaiah 51 and 20. We're that bull. They know. They know scripture. 
They just think they, they, the problem is they think that they're God. That's the problem. Read that. The book of Revelations, chapter 11, verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Right, when they conquer us. Go ahead. Because these two prophets. These two prophets, Judah and Ephraim. Go ahead. Tormented them. We tormented these nations. We tortured them. This is one instance. There's one other one where we said we cut their, um, I think Joshua cut their toe off. Yeah. yeah. Cut the dude's toes off because he, because he was known to cut people's toes off. Yeah. He said, I realize I'm, my toes getting cut <laughs> off because I cut toes off. <laughs> yeah. Yo, our forefathers had a, had a they, we, we, would, we would do things to you ironically. Oh, you want to cut toes off? Oh, okay, no problem. You want to cut beards off? Cool. Get the sauce. You think David was saying, gosh darn it, I'm cutting you in half. He said, like, oh, you want to oh, oh, cut niggas in half, huh? Oh, I got something for your ass. Yeah, get the saw for this dude. They wasn't talking all soft and they are darn it, shoot. No. Now I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not promoting foul language. I'm just saying our forefathers <laughs> were walking around with the darns and the hex. They weren't talking like that. They weren't talking like that. Even in that language, they weren't talking like that. Christianity, maybe, maybe white David in uh, Christianity was, but black people don't talk like that. Especially when they're going to war and fighting people for their lots of for survival. Them words are gonna come out. Words are gonna slip out. You getting stabbed and shot with arrows, you're gonna be hurting. I remember it said uh David, even his mighty men, all his men, they was like bears, mm-hmm. uh chafed bears that uh lost their whelps. Right. Uh, so that showed you the spirit that they had on them. They it wasn't said, playing games. Among the man. people. Because mm-hmm. David was real friendly and, and stuff, but there was another another mode to him. David was all friendly and dancing, hey, but there was another side to David. And that dude told his son, yo, don't, don't, even... don't mess with that dude. Don't mess with David and his boys, man. They'll, they'll kill you, man. They'll kill you. That's all. That's it? Uh, it's all in that verse? Uh, yeah, let me read it again. Yes. Um, and after, in verse 10, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Mm-hmm. So... We torment the nations. So once we got once once they overthrew us, they they had celebrations. They had celebrations. They made certain that we as a people remain sleep, dead spiritually, so that never happens again. That's J. Edgar Hoover right there. Yep, Black Unity. Now give me um the Bible as history. Give me the Bible as history by Warner. I'm not gonna take a break. You'll just go through because I ain't got much time anyway. We started late, so I'll just keep going. Weiner Keller. This book right here. Oh, I messed up. I messed up. Give, me, give, me, give me Ezekiel 23. Give me Ezekiel uh, 23. I, I, was going, I wanted that scripture. Ooh, I forgot. For the nose and all that. Yeah, Ezekiel 23, <laughs> verse 1. almost forgot. I right, said about that one. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 23. No, 23 verse 1 to 4. We're going to okay. jump down. We're going to read verse 1 to 10, then jump to 23 and to 26. The book of Ezekiel chapter 23 verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one, the daughters of one mother. Jerusalem, go ahead. And they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed. Their youth means that from our beginning. Come out of Egypt, we still committed sword whoredoms, go ahead. And, they were, and there they bruised the teats of their virginity. And the names of them were Ahola, the elder. And oh, no, the bishop's class, Aho, Ahola, <laughs> so Aho, Ahola, go ahead. The elder, which would be Judah. And Aho. No, no, I think Ahola is, we'll, we'll find out who it is. Ahola is the elder, go ahead. And Aho, Laba, her sister. Okay, younger, go ahead. And they were mine, and they, were, and they bare sons and daughters. Thus their, their names, thus were their names. Samaria is Ahola. And Jerusalem, Aho Laba. Right, so Samaria is the older because of Samaria or Ephraim went into idolatry first. So she's the eldest in wickedness. She's the eldest in whoredoms. And Judah follows soon after. Go ahead. So we're Aho Laba, and Ephraim is Ahola. Go ahead. Verse 5. And Ahola played the harlot when she was mine, and she doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors. Well, see, so show Ephraim, when the Assyrians rose up, our men and women were what? Mingle with them because they push what? Assimilation and so forth. That melting pot spirit was around the, among the Assyrians. So when Ephraim got displaced out their land, they intermingled themselves among these people. 
That's why you be asking, well, look at their phenotype. The Northern Kingdom, their phenotype. Northern Kingdom, primarily Northern Kingdom, were known for mingling themselves when they were not supposed to. A lot. Go ahead. Which were clothed with blue, which were clothed with blue. Captains and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding upon horses. Go ahead. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them and with all of them that were the chosen men of Assyria. Right, we messed around the men and women of Assyria and so forth. Women, our, women, our women messed around with their men. Our men messed around with their women and so, and so on. And we got involved in their gods and their worship. Go ahead. And with all on whom she doted, with all their idols she defiled herself. She got involved in their, in their worship. Go ahead. Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt. We didn't stop. So we brought... We worship Egyptian gods, and we worship the Assyrians' gods, too. We didn't even stop with that. Go ahead. For in her youth, they lay with her. Because now from, from our beginning, we maintained that Egyptian idolatry. From the time of Canaan up until this time. Go ahead, Ephraim. Go ahead. And they bruised the breast of her virginity. Remember, Jeroboam bought the golden calf to, e to Israel. Going back to what? The beginning of idolatry with, with, Mo with Aaron and the golden calf back then. Ephraim maintained that nonsense. Go ahead. And poured their whoredom upon her. And poured their whoredom, and we introduced our whoredom to the Assyrians. Why? Because it was a great melting pot. We learned from each other. Idolatry. Ephraim and Assyria. Go ahead. Verse 9. Wherefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers. Therefore I have put her into the hands of the Assyrians. You want to you wanna love them so much? You want to serve them too. Go ahead. Into the hand of the Assyrians upon whom she doted. Who were what? Diabolically cruel. And they flayed us, the men and women. Flayed them. Cut their eyes out. Cut their noses off. Ears off, heads off. Go ahead. These discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and, and her daughters and slew her with the sword. See, go ahead. And she became famous among women, for they had executed judgment upon her. They, as the Assyrians, executed judgment upon Ahola, Samaria. Go jump to verse um, 23 now. And that judgment, that's God's judgment. That's God's judgment. The wrath of said the staff of his anger. Right. 23. Verse 23. The Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, Picard and Shoah and Korah and all the Assyrians with them. So remember, the, the Babylonians and Assyrians, they ruled, but one ruled over the other. During this time, the Assyrians had Babylon in subjection at this point. That eventually Babylon overthrew the Assyrians with the help of somebody later on, I'll bring up later on. Okay? But at this point, the Babylonians assisted the Assyrians. Go ahead. All of them desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords and renown, all of them riding upon horses. And they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons, and wheels with an assembly of people, which shall set against thee buckler and shield and helmet round about. And I will set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to their judgments. They shall judge us according to their laws. Go ahead. And I will set my jealousy against thee, and they shall deal furiously with thee. Read verse 25 again. And I will set my jealousy against thee, and they shall deal furiously with they thee. Shall deal they shall deal furiously. Furiously with you. Diabolically cruel. Shall flay thee. And they're going to flay you. Watch, you going to say it. Watch this. They shall take away thy nose. They're going to take oh. your nose off. Mm. Go ahead. And thy ears. They're going to take your ears off. Damn. Go ahead. And thy remnant shall fall by the sword. They're going to kill you. Go ahead. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. And burn your homes to the ground. They shall also strip thee out of thy clothes. They're going to take your clothes. Remember on this side of the world, what are we wearing? Nothing. They shall do what? They shall also strip thee out of thy clothes and, and take away thy fair jewels. Because the fair jewels were in our clothes. But that's uh, Ezekiel 16. Yeah. How, how Ezekiel 16, Ezekiel Isaiah 3, 12. Yep. Same thing. I'm going to take all that from you. They're going to strip you down to nothing. Because you love them so much, you can be with them. Go ahead. So that this the cruelty of the Assyrians was God's cruelty. God's cruelty. The cruelty of the Babylonians, God's cruelty. The cruelty of the Persians, God's cruelty. The cruelty of the Greeks, God's cruelty. The Romans, God. Spaniards, Portuguese, the Arabs, Africans, God's anger. The British, the Dutch, the French, the Swedish, the Portuguese, the Belgian, um, the, um, the Dutch, God's anger. British, God's anger. The French. The French, God's anger. 
because they all did the same things to us. Just think about it. The French did the same thing. They hung us up. They skinned us, burned us at the stake, cut our hands off, cut our noses off, cut our ears off, cut our heads off. They, the Romans, they all did the same thing. The judgment against us is like a ring over and over again. If you see the pattern of punishment, why do we still keep playing with the Most High? Yeah. It's like a pattern. Yeah, that's what Israel did. He didn't care. This book right here. This book right here. Um, the Bible as History by Warner Keller. All right, we're going to get page 244. Take a look at this right here. All right, this is the book here. The Bible as History by Warner Keller. Um, confirmation, hold on, Confirmation of, of the Book of Books. Confirmation of the Book of Books. Hold it up longer. Confirmation of the Book of Books. You got it? All right, so page 244, we're going to be to page 246, right? What pages I gave y'all? 246? Yeah, stop at 246. All right, the end of the northern kingdom. End of who? The northern kingdom. Ahola. Go ahead. And Paul, the king of Assyria, came against the land, 2 Kings 15, 19. Paul, Tiglath-Pileser the third. Concise, sober, and dispassionate. These words announced the end of the northern kingdom. The death of Jeroboam II introduced the last act. In the same year, 747 B.C., the leprous king Uzziah of Judah also died. Mm -hmm. In the short intervening period during which... I believe, I believe Uzziah is Hezekiah's father, I believe. Go ahead. Um, in the short intervening period during which anarchy reigned, Manahem made himself king at Samaria. In 745 B.C., a former soldier by the well, name... Remember these names... Remember we earlier on a relief, it mentions all these conquered kings, Ahab, Amri, Menahem, Uzziah. It mentions them on their reliefs. Okay, read on. In 745 B.C., a former uh, soldier by name Paul had ascended the throne of Assyria and from then, and from then on was known as Tiglath-Pileser right. III. Right. See, here you go. That's Paul. Paul is Tiglath-Pileser III. We're going to go over this next week, Lord's will. Go ahead. He was the first of a succession of brutal tyrants who conquered what was so far the greatest empire of the ancient East. He was the first of the succession of brutal emperors. Go ahead. Their goal was Syria, Palestine, and the last cornerstone of the old world, Egypt. That meant that both Israel and Judah were caught between the uh, pitless millstones of a military state for which the word peace had a contemptible sound, mm -hmm. whose despot had cohort, cohorts had only three values. Marching, conquering, oppressing. Plundering. Go ahead. From North Syria, Tigla Pileser III swept through the Mediterranean countries and forced independent peoples to become provinces and tributaries of the Assyrian Empire. Paying tribute. If they didn't pay tribute, off with your nose, off with your ears, off with your eyes, off with your tongue, off with your skin. Israel at first submitted voluntarily, and Menahem gave Paul a thousand talents of silver that his hand might be with him. To confirm, to confirm the kingdom in his hand. And Menahem exacted the money of Israel, even, all, even of all the mighty men of wealth, mm -hmm. of each man 50 shekels of silver a lot of money, right? to give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back and stayed not there. As long as we paid our taxes, he left us alone. And stayed not there in the land. 2 Kings uh, chapter 15, verses 19 to 20. Uh -huh. I received tribute from Menahem of, of Samaria, noted Tiglath Pileser III in his annals. See that? Read again. Hey, what? I received tribute from Menahem of Samaria, noted Tiglath Pileser III in his annals. He wrote it down. He documented his tributes. Okay, King Menahem of Israel gave me tribute. He wrote, they wrote this, they found these things. This is the proof the Bible's true. Go ahead. 1,000 talents correspond to 6 million gold sovereigns. Wow. 50 shekels per head from the men of wealth amounted to 100 gold sovereigns each. Economists and st uh, statisticians 
will gather that there must have been 60,000 well-to-do people in Israel. Wow, a lot of money. He got a lot of money. King Menahem entertained the illusion that a, that a pact with the tyrant and voluntary tribute will be the lesser of two evils. But the result was bad blood amongst his own people. Anger at the Assyrian taxes found an outlet in conspiracy and murder. Pekka, an army officer, murdered Menahem's son and mm-hmm. their and heir mm-hmm. and ascended the throne. From then on, the anti-Assyrian party was the determining factor in the policy of the northern kingdom. Ephraim had no good kings. None. This guy conspired with Syria. This guy here said, I'm going to go against the Assyrians and join up with the Syrians. This is called the Ephraim, the, the Syro Ephraim conspiracy. Syro Ephraim, as in Aram and, and Ephraim, joined forces. Go ahead. Rezin, king of Damascus, powerfully grabs the initiative. Under his leadership, the defensive league of the Aramean states against cities. See, go ahead, go ahead. And Edomites. Joined the alliance. Israel, too, took its place in the federation. Only King Ahaz of Judah remained absolutely outside. Because Isaiah told him to stay out of it. When you read Isaiah, we're going to go over that next week. About Isaiah. We're going to read this whole account in Isaiah next week. But read that again. Uh, Rezin, king of Damascus, powerfully grabs the initiative. Under his leadership, the defensive league of the Aramean states against Assyria came uh-huh. to life again. Right, because the Ephraimites and Syrians joined forces to try to overthrow Assyria. Go ahead. With Pekka, resident in Pekka. Go ahead. Phoenician and Arabian states, Philistine, Philistine, Philistine cities and Edomites joined the alliance. Israel, too, took its place in the federation. Ephraim, go ahead. Only King Ahaz of Judah remained absolutely outside. We stay out of that. Go ahead, because Isaiah prophesied they, they, they'll, they'll lose. Go ahead. Rezin and Pekka tried to force Judah into the league violently. Yep, they try to, over, they, they try to join forces to overthrow us together. Go ahead. Um, Tigla Pelesa III, with a bow and sword, uh-huh. besieging a fortress, battering rams, Pound the walls, impaled victims in background. Impaled victims in the background. Go up in the back, go to the back. Look at the bodies in the back. Damn. Impaled victims in the background. That's God's anger. They were terrible, the Assyrians. Next, go, move over. Then resin. King of Syria and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of uh, Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war. And they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. Right. 2 Kings 16, 5. And dire straits. Go ahead. And dire straits, the king of Judah sent an SOS. So Ahaz sent messages to Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria. Because yep. uh-huh, he was scared. He was a, he was just, his king was a beta. He was terrible. Go ahead. Saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the, of the king of Assyria and out of the hand of the king of Israel which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord. The temple. And in the treasures of the king's house. The evil as hell. Wrong as hell. Go ahead. And sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. Wow. 2 Kings 16, 7 and 8. I received tribute from jo- Joaz, Ahaz of Judah. Observed the Assyrian once more. He wrote that down. I received tribute from jo- jo- Ahaz, king of Judah. He wrote that in his annals. Go ahead. Now events took their disastrous course. For our knowledge of further development, we are, we, were, we are indebted to two great historical records. First, the Bible. Two great historical records. First and foremost, the Bible. Go ahead. And second, the cuneiform tablets of stone and clay on which over 600 miles from where the terrible events took place. Because he wrote these things on cuneiform. He wrote them on the walls. So the Bible first and foremost, and then the, he wrote these, he documented these things down on the cuneiform. Go ahead, or obelisk. The, mili- ahead. the military developments were officially recorded. For more than two and a half millennia, do- these documents lay in the magnificent palaces on the Tigris until scholars ran them to earth and translated them into our tongue. Diligent research. And translated them into our tongue, English. Go ahead. They make it plain once more in, a quite a, in, in quite a unique way how true to history are the contents of these biblical stories. Boom. Wow. This, the, the excavations prove and point out how true the Bible is. Go ahead. The Bible and Assyrian monuments are in entire agreement in their description of these events, which were fatal for the northern kingdom. 
The Old Testament historians notes down the facts soberly. The Assyrian chronicler re- records every brutal detail. You know what's crazy though about talking about Assyria? Wasn't Jonah sent to Assyria? Right. And he said, that, I'm not going over there. The hell with them. And what happened to Jonah? <laughs> he he ended up getting up. swallowed up. By a whale, right? Right. What happened to that white dude recently? Got swallowed, Got swallowed up, up by a whale. By a whale. <laughs> Bible's not real. You can't be swallowed by a whale and live. That white dude did. A white dude got swallowed by a whale by accident. The whale swallowed him up. He said he was in the whale's stomach for about a few, se- like I think for a few. 15. 15 seconds. 15 seconds, which is a pretty long time. And he said he had to rub the inside of the mouth, at the head, and then it spit him out. That was a, um, be- uh, what kind of whale was it again? It was a humpback a whale. A humpback whale. Back well. Now, the, now and that well isn't, isn't even the biggest well. He ain't even the biggest. And a man survived with a few bruises here and there. So the Bible's not real. You guys don't know what the hell you're talking about. Let's read on. So the well that Jonah was in was way bigger than that one. He was in it for three days. Three nights. Hear that? Um, uh, detailed laid waste like mounds after the flood. From Western Campaign 734 to 733 B.C. It says, in the days of Pekah, king of uh, Israel, came Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, and took Hazor, Hazor and Gilead and Galilee, Galilee uh-huh. all the land of Nathali, and carried them captive to Assyria. 2 King 1529. Mm-hmm. Watch this. Uh, Bet Omri, Israel, all of whose cities I had added to my territories on my former campaigns. And had left out only the city of Samaria. He writing this, he wrote this down. Watch this. The whole of Nathali I took for Assyria. I put my officials over them as governors. The, the land of bet All his people and their possessions I took away to Assyria. From Western Campaign uh, and Gaza, Damascus. Campaign, 734 to 733 B.C. Watch this, read on. And Hosea. Uh, made a conspiracy against Pekah and slew him and reigned in his stead. Uh-huh. Second Kings fifteen thirty. Uh-huh. They overthrew Pekah, their king, and I made Hosea to be king over them from Gaza Damascus campaign. Damn. Somber evidence of the capture of Ho- uh, Hazor by Tiglath-Pileser the third, king of Assyria. Second Kings fifteen twenty nine has been supplied by a layer of rubble at Tel uh, Tel A Kada in Israel. In the course of the most recent excavations by archaeologists from the Hebrew University, traces came to light of the shattered Israelite fortress, which had, which had been uh, rebuilt during a monarchy for defense purposes by Solomon and, and uh, Ahab on the site of the old Canaanite fort, which had been conquered by Joshua. The strength of the, the, strength of the keep, which is six foot thick walls, was such that it was only surpassed by the famous royal palace at Samaria, mm-hmm. now likewise rediscovered. The apartments in the castle at Hazor were covered by a layer of ashes three feet thick. The stones were blackened with smoke, charred beams, and fragments of what had been at one time paneled ceilings lay scattered about the ground. Is that it? Is it? No, it's not what I want. He says, he says something about what he, why he did it. Come on. Two... 246. 246. You got 246? Yes, sir. Go down to the bottom. I think you skipped something. It just records every brutal detail. Oh, okay. I read that. This. So read um, the Bible and the Syrian monuments. The Bible and the Syrian monuments are in entire agreement in their depiction of these events. The description. Which were fatal for the northern kingdom. The Old Testament historian notes down the facts soberly. The Assyrian chronicler records every brutal detail. The Assyrian chronicler records every brutal detail. Second Kings, read that, watch this. Second, King, second book of Kings. The king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it and carried the people of his captive to Kerr and slew Rezin. He slew Rezin, Pekka's boy. He, watch this. Second Q- Kings 16.9. Cuneiform. Cuneiform text of tiglath III. III. His, his, his writings, watch this. His noblemen I impaled alive and displayed this exhibition to his land. Remember they were there earlier? You had impaled people in the background. Go ahead. All his gardens and fruit orchards are destroyed. I besieged and captured the native city of Rezin, of Damascus. 800 people with their belongings I led away. Towns 
in 16 districts of Damascus. I, I laid waste like mounds after the flood from Western Campaign 734 to 733 B.C. So he's making clear what he did. He laid waste everything. All right? Showing that these guys were, were cruel and they documented everything that they did. They documented everything that they did. Hold on a second. Yeah, that was it. So I'm going to stop there for now. We'll just wrap it up. Um, so we're going to lead and we're going to eventually go into the fall of Assyria. We're going to go into the history about Northern Kingdom falling again and leading up to the fall of the Assyrians as well, how they fell and how Babylon took over. So that, that's going to take us into Daniel 7, which will be the time of the Gentiles. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Hope you guys are something out of it. Um, um, shout outs to the IT team. Shout outs to the breakfast team as well. No praises for that. And um, uh, announcements? Yes, sir. Hey, let's give Deacon a hand for that class once again. <laughs> a lot of information. A great class. All the class. Uh, Israel, as you see where your funds go to, Deacon grabbing more and more books to bring more information to you guys. Um, if you want to donate, remember our PayPal um, has changed to ioic.philadelphia at israelunite.org. Uh, we appreciate all the donations. Um, also, don't forget to donate to the Booster Club, iuic.fundraising at israelunite.org. And follow our YouTube page on uh, Our Hidden History Radio. Okay? Our Hidden History Radio. Where you can oh, find shout out to, us, to, to whoever um, donated the book, the Roman Emperor's book. You got it. Thank you so much for that. We got more copies of that now. We got two, I think three now. So all praises for that. We can always use more. All, all right. praises. All praises to the Lord. So follow our uh, YouTube, Our Hidden History Radio, so you can find all, all right. the Speak episodes. up like you got some life in you, bro. Come on, man. Yes, sir. Follow our YouTube channel on Our Hidden History Radio, so you can find every episode that Deacon did uh, from the... His northern Kingdom in Americas, all the way up to the Moors, and up till now with Assyria. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's like that. yes. Follow, uh, subscribe, like, and comment on our pages. Also, shout out to the brothers that came down yesterday for the uh, Philly March of Juneteenth. All praise in the Most High, brothers. Uh, USC, Rochester, Rochester, New York, uh, 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 New, New Jersey. Jersey. New Jersey. Yep. Yeah, all praise. And shout the out to uh, Deacon Malakaya. For blessing, uh, yes, sir. The new Philly camp spot, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Please. Shout out to Raven and Wolves. Yep. Uh, Officer Jess, I think that's, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it, man. Deacon. Uh, with that, we say shalom. And until next week, we'll see y'all again. Shalom, most sign, Christ bless. Shalom, right. thank shalom. you, most sign, Christ bless. Searching for the road to the way back. We don't know our father's gonna. Right. No. Woo. Yeah. We at the bottom, but really ain't no one on top of us. I see the ain't coming and I did not need no binoculars. If this was a game, then we about to win the whole tournament. This place going down and I'm going up like the firmament. As far as um, the men standing there chanting, you know what I'm saying, and being there, standing there strong in the order, what you think about you seen right there, the display you just seen? It's beautiful. It's amazing. We came over to follow y'all. That's what made me walk and get my shirt and everything because I seen y'all. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Let me go this way. I don't know what they're saying, I feel like but I when felt you it. see people like more like in the image of what you stand for, and when you see strong black men out here, like that makes us women want to come out and Absolutely. follow suit because Absolutely. you see that they out here and they want to make a change. So we should be out here wanting to make that same change as well. Absolutely. To the way back, we don't know our father's going way back. Do you know it? Do you know it? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah.
We the chosen people, you say no way. Enemies are teaching you the wrong way. Do you know it? Do you know it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Searching. You hear me, boy, I'm 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 sear